Oh, hello, hello. <clears throat> okay, how are we doing, guys? Can you also say how are how you doing? That's like what I say to let them know I'm like ready to go and I'm here. So I'll be like, hey guys, what's up? But wait, I don't see us. Well, because I don't bring my screen on until we've like both said like, hey guys, what's up? And then I bring the camera in. Why? Uh, it's just like what I do. So when you say like, hey guys, what's up? Then I'll bring the camera in. I let them do the talking. What, what do you mean them do the talking? Them. The, us, we're the talkers, though. Them. Oh. <laughs> you mean those. Yeah. Okay. Wait, shit. Can you do me one? See, they got it, and they didn't even see. True. Yeah. Can you do me one quick favor? Nope. Please? No. You can't do me a quick favor? <laughs> really? No, because I don't know what you're going to ask. Oh, can you just, like, turn the light off on that thing? It's, like, it's easier for you to get up than me, because I'm, like, trapped in here. It's just, like, that switch on the wall. Good job. Oh, why is the light off back there? That's so creepy. Okay. Okay. Nice. There you are. Now you're in. Yay. Okay. Ready to finish this bad boy up? Let's do it. Where's her brother? Yeah, where's your brother? I thought you said you were bringing him. Oh, I, um swiped my bike membership for him he's riding a bike oh cute yeah oh my god i was so embarrassed i was at the gym and i got recognized again oh he told you me know? yeah i know and i was like oh god like because it happens so often i'm like so embarrassed because i'm like so famous you know yeah man yeah. yeah my brother's so impressed he wants to fuck you now i don't know what your point is why did you have to take it there <laughs> He told me that uh, he asked you, like, how's the stream going? Mm -hmm. And you were, like, talking about the stream, I guess. Mm -hmm. He didn't know we were, like, watching something. And you mm -hmm. were, like, pretty bad. But he thought you meant, like, our stream. But then he understood. And then you asked him, like, oh, are you the red pill brother? And he was, like, no. And you're, like, oh, there's just, like, these red pill guys. And they're pretty dumb. And then he said that he said, like, oh, dumber than my sister. And you said, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Well, because he was joking he said with me, he so I was, was joking, joking back. But he said you didn't laugh, so he said I don't know if he was. I joking. don't. I'm not a laughing person. I'm a stoic alpha joker. Oh, okay. So like, I'll walk up and say a joke, and look like this the whole time, because that's my style of humor. It's kind of British, actually, because I spent a lot of time over there, you know. So in London, in Cambridge. Let's finish. Okay. Question to you: Was it Tony? Yeah. The the centerpiece of the book was who do you want to be. So the question to you, was it Tony? Yeah. Okay, the question is, who do you want to be? So you're going to go through law school. I get it. I fully agree with Myron. Get your degree. All good. But not to throw lovely Sarah under the bus, do you want to be 37, a successful lawyer, still single, but you're doing great in law. <laughs> you, you, you work for a Greenberg charge down here in Miami. Go queen. Or do you want to actually be married and have kids? And you can still be a lawyer, but you might have to put that on the back burner to support your man. So Yeah, that's absolutely. A, my, my first question is, how many 22-year-old guys do you think want to get married right now? Because I think in the general sense, they want to get married. Yeah. 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 You don't want a 22-year-old. Well, because yeah. I'm 22 years old, so I'm ready to get married. At I like how the automatic assumption is, well, if you're 22, you definitely want to be with a 30-year-old guy. Like, it's inconceivable that a 22-year-old girl isn't automatically mm. trying to, like, date somebody that's 30 years old. Like, that, they wouldn't even factor that in, like, with the question. Like, yeah, that's just funny. 30, I think most men my age are going to be ready to get married at 30, right? Yeah, but what I'm saying yeah. is that you're, you don't want a guy that's 22. So let's say you meet no. this guy that's exactly 30. Exactly, I want a guy that's at 30 when I'm 30. So when I'm ready to get married, most men will be ready to get what? married. That nobody okay, in the, the audience, audience can compute years. that. Like, what? Like, the, what is the average age difference between man, women, marriage? What do you think it is? I think I already know the answer, so I'm shitting a little bit, but I'll ask you first. What do you think? I don't know. It's hard for me to answer. My parents are 10 years apart, and in my community, it's usually a 10-year gap. I don't know what it is for. I Americans. think the average in the United States, I think, is four years. Okay. Oh, interesting. Jeez. Okay. Even. Okay. The average age gap between people in heterosexual relations in the United States is about two point three years. That's from Psycon.net. This is between two and three years in Spain, the UK. And it's funny that they say it's more compatible thirty to twenty because I think they say as uh, you add a decade to the age gap, the chances of divorce probably go up like increase. a crazy amount. Yeah. Sure. 8% of relation in Western countries, around 8% of male female couples have an age gap of 10 years or more. 8%. Mm. 
30 doesn't want a woman that's 30. They want yeah. younger women. Well, maybe and what I wanted I at 20 and I wanted at 30 is different than what I wanted at 40. Well, it's it's different. Different. What I wanted at 20 and what I wanted at 30 and now that I'm 40 yeah. are completely different. What's well, well, through your mindset? What's 100%. the difference? So when you're and listen, ladies, here's what you should listen and stop yeah. talking. Listen to the 40-year-old on the panel, okay? At 20, you're looking short-term, right? You're looking what's right now, what your life's going to look like, how you can party, how you can move on, you can go to school, you can do all of that. 30s, you're starting to look at family. You're starting to look, um, I chose very wrong in my 30s, very wrong, and he started to take on the less masculine role, and that's when I filed for divorce. I wasn't happy being with somebody that was going to allow me to make all the decisions. <laughs> but now at 40, I, like, I want somebody that's going to be a leader and that's going to show me, like... like now that you're 40... Can, yeah, now that you're 40, I want somebody that's, like, that's more commanding and more, like... So, you're 40... No, what, 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 no, 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 what's, no, what's the so likelihood... Put some odds on this I'm thing, I'm not single, Gigi. baby. What's that? I'm not single. Well, I was saying for him. I'm not single, okay. so... She's married. Yeah. You're she's, married right now? Yeah, married. Know, yeah. And what does he know. think about the fact that you're a porno star? He, so he supports it completely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be, can, let's be candid. Let's be candid. When, when she was in her 20s, that guy probably wouldn't have been your first choice. What's that? I said, being candid here, mm -hmm. the guy that you're currently with now probably wouldn't have been your first choice when you were at your peak in your 20s. Um, so oh. I actually knew him back when... We it's funny how he ignored every single thing she said. The guy that you have now probably wouldn't have been your peak choice in your 20s. When he's implying is that at your 20s is when you want the best, and then it gets worse from there, when the reality is what you want is probably different. When you're 20, what you want is different than when you're 30, which is different than when you're 40, which is probably true of both men and women in general. I feel like his point was just that, like, she settled, right? His point is yeah. that she settled, but, but the reality is that she probably wouldn't want the same type of guy. If she could choose like the best guy ever when she's 20, yeah. probably wouldn't be the type of guy she would want now. Because I guess when she's 20, you're like, prioritizing like- He means like, in objective ways, like but it's not height, yeah. status. Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's not an objective metric. Like the best type of man for a girl when she's 20 is probably gonna be different than the best type of man a girl would want when she's 30. Like at 20, you might want somebody that's like maximizing like the fun factor and everything in your life. At 30, you might want somebody that's maximizing like the family priority status in your life at 40, 50, you're looking for like really emotionally stable long-term support. Like your goals are changing mm -hmm. and the same type of guy that you would, oh, the same type of guy you would choose at like 20 is gonna be different than 30, 40. It's not necessarily better or worse. It's just you're prioritizing differently. It's probably true of guys as well. I guess his point was like, let's say she had the pick of the litter. She had the type of guy she would have wanted when she was 20. Mm -hmm. She, he's probably saying she probably would have still picked that guy now if she had the option. I feel like that's yeah, what he's but implying. She, yeah, that's what he's implying, but she's saying she wouldn't have. So it doesn't matter if you believe her or if you believe him or whatever. No, I'm asking you like what you think. I don't think so. Okay. I think that women, I think men and women, I think prioritize things a little bit differently based on where you're at in life, basically. Hmm. That like when you're in your early, early 20s, you're probably looking to party, have fun, like adventure, go explore, whatever. Um, like if I was dating a girl at 20 and I'm 20, and, the, and we're like, oh, how do you feel about kids? And I was like, yeah, I really want kids. So like, okay, maybe like 20s, late 20s, whatever. If I meet a girl who's 30 and she says, I really want kids, our relationship is on a really accelerated timetable. Like yeah. we're not going to date for five years and then figure out if you want kids or not because this is probably your last big relationship where you have a shot at making that happen in a reasonable time frame. Yeah. Right? So like your priorities in life are way different. Also, being in college and dorming and having a car not having a car like all of these things are changing a lot versus when you're 25 30 you're like establishing your career and you're probably looking for something a little bit different you know i think for like men and women i'd say i don't know i feel like you're just saying it in a very nuanced way that's about compatibility i just don't think that's what he's referring to i agree he's not talking about chemistry so they're just talking about like no, I'm not the same way about... the girls on his panel if he asks what are you looking for they'll talk about income and height so he's just assuming that's what she'd talk about not about like yeah fun i factor. understand what you're saying yeah. i'm not denying what you're saying i agree that that's what he's saying I'm not disagreeing that that's what he's saying. Yeah. But she's saying something different and he can't, is he not computing that? He's just saying that, he's saying that women want high value men, um, max resources, max looks, max status at 20, 30, 40, 50. And that at 20, you can get the best of this. At 30, it's going to be worse. Mm -hmm. At 40, it's going to be worse. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's saying. Yeah. But what she's saying is that at 20, she wants a guy who's like fun, sexy, adventurous, uh, enables uh, excitement in life, basically, right? But at 30, she might want a guy who's more emotionally intelligent, stable career, stable um, relationship. Like she's looking for something like this. So 20 is, she's not downgrading at 30. She's looking for something that's fundamentally different. You don't think the stable career thing maps onto the, the HVM traits? Uh, not necessarily, not the type of HVM you'd look for at 20. Okay. Right? Like, I don't think, so for instance, if you took like a, tw let's say this is possible, I know this isn't possible, like at 20 years old, would like a woman want to date 
like a lawyer who works like a nine to five or maybe even nine to five, like six or seven days a week if he's going for a partner or something, right? But she's like, okay, well, it's good. It's his career. It's an investment. Or would she rather be like with a, a guy that's- on, Like millionaire entrepreneur who has like a yacht and stuff, right? For well, like the lifestyles that we mean. I was going to say, do you want to be with an ultra stable career guy who's throwing a line at his career? Or do you want to just be with like a college guy who's like taking electives with you and is like having fun and like goes to drink on like Friday, Saturday, you know, parties and stuff and like has fun. You're probably looking more for somebody like that than like the ultra career man when you're 20 years old. Yeah. I haven't watched a ton of Fresh and Fit. Is that like what the girls say when they're on? I, I don't, I never listen to girls when they're on. <laughs> the girls on the Fresh and Fit, it depends on, one, it depends on how many of them are fucking the guys on the show. Because if they're fucking the guys on the show, they're always going to agree with every single yeah. thing they say. Um, and then two, a lot of the girls it, on these shows are literally in like sugar daddy, sugar That's baby what I say, arrangements I and shit. Ever, I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever heard them on these panels say um, that they're looking for like another college age guy. No, never. But they're, this is also like an exceptional, also a lot yeah. of these girls aren't even going to school anymore or there's just like, it, it's a way, way, way different world. Yeah. Or like we had. my point even further. Uh, <laughs> yep. I went from I went from one marriage to like another. Yeah, so, but yes. you kept them there because yes. you knew what it was. You're, you, you're basically you did the same strategy that the lawyer girl was trying to exercise. Now what I'm saying is that the man that you want is not going to wait because That's other right. women are yeah. knocking at his door. Okay. He's in demand. He can replace you. And I don't think women understand that once you go up the totem pole of success when it comes to the male hierarchy, you have less and less and less leverage. So you got to be on his program. He says, Hey, I'm ready to do this right now. Fuck your law school. You need to go ahead and jump on that wagon right then and there mm -hmm. because if you don't, somebody else will. And I don't think women understand. No. There's plenty of beautiful women. There's plenty of girls that fall in line. There's a new girl turning 18 every single day and the thing that women don't get is that it's extremely easy to satisfy a man, but it's not extremely easy to satisfy a woman. So understand that you don't have leverage, but we live in this crazy world where women think that they have leverage. You guys really don't. The man picks you, you don't pick him. Well, they say that the man- That was easy. I don't even know what that means. I thought that the women were the ones that chose because they were the gatekeepers and is he just saying like the high value men are the ones that pick or? I don't, I don't understand what that I felt like. I think he a, just means like at that age. Okay, I guess. That felt like a whole reversal yeah. of everything he believes, but. Oh. The, 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 what is it? The, uh, a man can attain a woman, but a woman must, must retain the yeah. man? So, a guy game is being yeah. able to attain a girl. The more game you have, the more you can attain. It's the woman's job to keep you. So, with, you know, Miss, uh, the lawyer here, 22, the future lawyer. 20. Like, uh, 20, no, 22, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 22. Yeah. 20, so, yeah. here's the thing you're in a career field that's going to have you arguing all the time working long hours, you're gonna have to take on some masculine traits, especially if you wanna make partner, etc. which is all great. But understand that your, your career is going to make you a mess, less desirable woman to the very man that you want. The more argumentative, the more dominant, the more masculine woman is, the more the man has to elevate his masculinity to overpower that. So, or you're gonna have to get with, so, yeah, with a pussy, which you're not gonna like. One of the things that these guys never factor in, I tried to have this conversation like five different ways, I think the last time I was on the show, is they always assume that as women increase their status and their dating pool decreases, that that's a bad thing. But it could just be that being selective, more selective isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like every time you increase your status as a man or woman, they wouldn't agree with men. But realistically, when you increase your status as a man or woman, you're necessarily decreasing your dating pool. But that's not necessarily like a horrible thing. I don't think he's saying uh, it's her choice. I think he's saying like she'll become less attractive to well, the, other men, right? Or yeah, he, that's what he's saying. Because you're going to become hypergamy. Well, he's saying that like as you become a successful lawyer and shit, you're going to become like more masculine, more argumentative, and there are guys that aren't going to be willing to date you anymore. But my guess is going to be on the flip side is that a woman that has the drive to become a lawyer, be a litigator, and do all of that probably doesn't want to be with a guy that would be threatened by a woman that's a lawyer. That'd be my guess. Yeah, that. And I feel like a lot of lawyers marry each other, a lot of doctors marry each other. So sure. I feel like even her not being this and being just like someone who doesn't go to college, she's cutting off a big section of the dating pool because she yeah. couldn't probably marry a lawyer maybe, depending yeah. if he's like an old money lawyer and stuff like that. Yeah. Although they'll always say for guys, they'll marry anybody, although that's not true, but yeah. <clears throat> Unless so, you can uh, figure out how to separate work and home, if you can be submissive at home to your man yeah, you can do both. and the leader yeah, yeah, at work. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a lie, because okay. here's the thing. Hyper successful people, A type personalities, they're successful because they can't turn it off. I can. Yeah, yeah okay. Anyway, okay. Um, okay. you can't. Because Speaking of Jedediah, uh, that, that she successful. can't turn it off. I'm pretty sure Jedediah does turn it off. The reason why are successful, yeah. right? A type personality guys are talking about millionaires, whatever it may be, they don't turn it off. They work at all times. You can't turn it off. That's a lie. That's it's hard to do. It's very hard to do. Very Speaking of uh, uh, women becoming more masculine and men becoming more feminine, uh, you guys have gained uh, worldwide notoriety for uh, the Frank Castle move. So some girls, when they get out of pocket, Walk me through what has to happen in order for a girl to do that. Should we play the clip first? Play the clip. Okay, let's play the clip of what happens when a girl acts a little too masculine and alpha around Myron and Fresh. Okay. <laughs> Y'all can say what you want to say. Here's, here's the reality. This is why chivalry's dead and women killed it. I mean, y'all can say what you want to say, man. But why is a man, real talk, like, like feminism is here. You know, women are more educated than ever before. They make their own money. You know what I'm saying? And as a byproduct of them being, making their own money and becoming more successful, you get a little bit more masculine energy. You're not going to be a heavy hitter making yeah. money by being passive and a pussy. You're going to become a little bit more masculine, right? And then on top of that, women are just having a little bit more recreational. Okay. 
Yeah. He's calling out a girl being as masculine. Not this one. Yeah, this one. What happened here? Hold on. Play this clip. I think it's uh, the one before. Yeah. I would say help Wait, us, but I don't think this is first of all. This is a lot. Okay, the last, the last male that you were sexually involved with. No. <laughs> that's not an answer. In person? No. In person or online? No. Never. See, did you, did, how all right, yo, yo, get the fuck off the show, man. This, Thank this, this you. Is this, I was yo, waiting for me show, to be man. kicked out. Oh, oh, God bless. Stupid. Because I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Right, we'll but I missed it. Matt, we Y'all need to pull the shit out of Okay. So it's kind of like she said she never fucked anybody before, I think. And he kicked her out? I guess, but it sounds like she's probably argumentative all night. She wants to leave and he wants her out. I, I don't know. That's what it sounded like, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Girl got the boot. That's happened before. There's also another one right here. I also want to, yeah. I don't know if you guys caught that. She said you're mad weird. Let's peel that back oh. later. Oh. Putting your foot down is considered weird in 2023 with disrespectful and rambunctious women. So let's continue to be fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking that, of that's weird. That's how much of a foreign concept it is, yeah. And, and, and just to add some context here, the whole show, yeah. she was being like yeah. disingenuous, shouting out random stuff. So that was like, yeah, like that was, yeah. that was the end game of like an hour plus of disrespect. Yeah, yeah. And when I kicked her out, I finally put my foot down. She said, you're weird. That should speak volumes as to the world that we're in now where she's not used to men holding her accountable and kicking her out or giving her neg negative consequences for poor decisions. She probably didn't say they're weird because they kicked her out. She probably said they're weird because the show is like super strange if you're like a normal person. I guess is that's why she said that. But... Oh, she said you're weird after they kicked her out. So did they explain why they kicked her out or no? Well, they kicked her out because they said she was being too argumentative and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it sounded like she was leaving like, thank God I'm out of here. You guys are weird. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like she was saying they're weird because she got kicked out. It's, she was probably saying because she thought the show was weird or they were being misogynist or something. It's probably what she felt like. Okay. Uh, we have one more clip. Speaking of girls acting weird uh, or, you know, <laughs> accusing you of being weird. There's one more clip and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Stay weird, gentlemen. Stay weird. <laughs> I'm not right now. Who's me, you stupid bitch? No, bitch, you fucking stupid No, get off me. Whoa, 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 yeah, um, yeah, shout out to Tommy Sotomayor. Um, yeah, I mean, she hit him first. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I told him this all the time, right? I told my sister this, etc. Understand that if you hit the wrong guy, he might hit he you might back. Hit he might actually give you the equality that you wanted. Not every guy's gonna exercise temperance and I hit you back. Right, me personally, if a girl hits me, I ain't hitting her back. But other guys are gonna give you the equality you asked for. So don't try it. Yeah, there's a saying that says, equal rights, equal lefts. Now, we don't hate women, Equal but, rights, equal lefts. Yeah. That's a saying. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, Jorge, you know, Jorge. Can we turn everybody up a little bit? We're getting a little so, low. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, again, we never advocate for violence against women, yeah, etc. But never. some guys will take that opportunity to exercise full self-defense to the fullest extent, even if it's at the, you know, at a female. So, ladies, bad. never put your hands on a, yeah, never put your hands on a guy because you don't know what his background is. But can we know yeah. what triggered her? That was a uh, yo, yo, they, they had an argument basically over like. It's a long story, but basically, her friend fucked Tommy, and there was some dispute about OnlyFans. And uh, Martin Idol, man, that girl was strong as fuck. I won't lie to you, man. <laughs> she was like, if I didn't play football, that bitch would have had me on the ground. It, it was a love triangle of jealousy, to okay. summarize. And apparently, so, she went to Dubai and did some porta porta partying, if you know what I mean. <laughs> After fact. I don't know, Walt got some miles. Wild <laughs> what? She went to Dubai, porta potty, After Effect? I don't know what he just said. Dubai, porta potty? Like, what that means? No, what does that mean? Um, it's like when Western girls go to Dubai to do like degrading acts for the sheikhs. So like to be shat on and stuff oh. or fucked by camels. Jesus. What the fuck? Why do you know that? My mom went to Dubai last year. I'm just kidding. Not for that. To visit her brother. No, it's just like a common thing people say. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> Um, um, well, I think okay. I think with that being said, you were you were kind of touching on a bit uh, a little bit. I think it'd be important for you to clear the air because I actually think you are respectable to, to, to women unless they disrespect you. Yeah. So you know you've been all called all the names in the book, uh, you know chauvinist, misogynist, women hater, racist now too. You know racist, <laughs> or whatever. Misogyny. Why don't you clear the air? How do you really feel about women? Well, I <laughs> had to be Zerka, bro. Yeah, bro. My thing is that. They're one of the most prized commodities in the world, but with that said, with women comes responsibility. And you have to understand that that responsibility is on you to be the leader and lead her the correct way. Because if you don't, she's gonna lead the relationship and we know what happens when women lead, it's to the end of the relationship. So it's on the guy. I think the, at the end of the day, the ultimate responsibility comes on the guy. So if you get finessed by a girl, it's your fault. If a girl um, treats you poorly, it's your fault. A woman's behavior is typically a mere reflection of that man's masculinity and frame. Okay. And I think it's important just to add this as well, is that we learn women not to hate them, but to understand them. And ultimately you wanna be next to them because having kids and a family is important. And to know that you're the leader, which means if you're the leader, you bear the responsibility. Like, the, the thing is, is that a lot of people look at our content and say, y'all just bash women, blah, 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 No, we respect women, we treasure women, but we understand their nature that they're not... Do you feel like they respect women? I think the treasure woman part was a huge stretch. Yeah. He, he definitely doesn't treasure them. Like, he literally tells them repeatedly, like, you're not special, that's his mantra. Like, what do you think about Zerka point. saying fuck women when they said, what do we think about women? What do I think about Zerka... Saying fuck women. 
saying whatever to get airtime on these shows. Okay, so you don't think they value women? Wow. Okay, you're on the record saying that. Leaders, the man has to be the leader. If there's an issue in the relationship a lot of the times, infidelity, blah, 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 it's your fucking fault as a man. But they don't clip that part, do they? Um, next clip I wanna, I wanna do, you were actually the first time you were on my show. Yeah. Uh, I had some ladies on the show, yeah. and we had a whole conversation about uh, being vulnerable in front of your woman. Remember this clip? Yep. And uh, you're like, fuck that. No, yep. you cry in front of a woman, here's what happens. So let's play that clip, we'll have that discussion on the other side. Now you got this? The woman is some of the worst advice that modern day women give to men because if I sit there and I cry to you, oh my god, my life is hard, blah 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 blah. You might sit there and console me for a bit, but deep down by you, you're no, gonna go and find someone. That's so much. I know. No, the vulnerability shows cry, cry vulnerability is so human. powerful. Again, this is a common example of women saying one thing but doing another. They're saying this right now, but deep down, if your man came to you and was crying on your shoulder, saying, "I don't know what's going on," her I vagina's gonna. Him. Can I finish? Can I finish? Her vagina's gonna dry up. She ain't gonna want to fuck with him anymore. She's gonna look for a stronger, more capable man because women are designed to look for security. Just because they cry once, bro. Hey, man, I can't tell you how many times we brought girls on the show with yep. their own. They tell us on air. I one time my boyfriend cried in front of me, and I never looked at him the same. Being vulnerable. Okay. So even even my question on the show is like, so what is acceptable as a man? What do you think? You know, because you even said earlier, we all have emotions, but we're not emotional. This sounds like PTSD. <laughs> emotional. You know, I'm a big advocate and believer in stoicism. Yeah. That's something I've had to learn before I came to Valuetainment. Pat gave me a book, PBD, shout out to him. It's called Meditations, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah. And, and stoicism essentially is like, whether great things happen to you or shitty things happen to you, you just kind of got to be the rock and deal with it, be a stoicist. Yeah. Uh, how do you grapple with this? Like, like you, sometimes you might get triggered. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, so a man, emotions, dealing with their women, life, life's not easy, we all know life's tough. Yeah. How do you guys handle this? Well, let me ask the girls, how many of you want a vulnerable man? Raise your hands. Three, okay, no, that's cool. And then on the couch, how many of you want a vulnerable man? Shout on the couch. Vulnerable man. One, okay, anybody else want a vulnerable man? No, absolutely okay. not. Is it, here, stupid, we is it do. stupid to say to a certain extent? Is not, it considered stupid? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Like, maybe not like, oh, like, my life is terrible, I hate this, I hate that, but more, it's more in the sense, like, if I... They, they see, like, this is true. They always frame vulnerability in the most fucking retarded way yeah. possible. That's more of a self-report on their emotional IQ than anything I've ever heard in my life. Like, in their opinion, like, being vulnerable just means, like, crying and, like, slouching around the house and feeling sorry for yourself all the time. Like, it's so... It's such a, like, childish view of, of like, emotions. Mm -hmm. I, if I do something for him and he shows a little bit of... Well, the problem, the thing is with vulnerability is that you're in a position where it, it could be, you know, like, hey, oh, it's, it's essentially critical because that's what makes it vulnerable so in the first place. There's maybe a difference between yeah. like showing some emotion versus being vulnerable. So yeah. you said you want a guy to be vulnerable. Why? Because I like a man that can show up their feelings. So it's beautiful when you can connect with your man with their feelings. Okay. So what feelings do you the, want to the, see? The men's are more is stronger than the women's. But you can show me. If you are my partner, I'd like you to show me your feelings. And that's for me, it's um, a vulnerability. This is a problem. <laughs> okay, what about you? No. Why? I think showing vulnerability with someone is very, very special. And I think it takes a lot of bravery to do so. So if someone can show vulnerability to me, I feel special. And I also look up to them a lot because they are, they can do it. They can admit fault. They can feel upset about things. Like, they can feel love. They can feel the connection. But I feel like when he, <laughs> but I feel like when he means hey, give me an argument. If you, you can do all the insults, but it's not going to prove me wrong at all. I feel, I, I feel like when he means vulnerable, it doesn't mean like out of emotion. It doesn't mean that it you're like schizophrenic and depressed stable. and just like going through the mental health. Like, yeah. It's not like vulnerable, well, like yeah. everything affects him. It's em emotionally is stable that they can control their emotions. It's different. Vulnerable, it means like everything affects him. I don't want a person like that. No, person. it doesn't mean that. Can be all right, so who else wants a vulnerable man? One, two, who else? Raise their hand. It's a... Okay, why? I, because I think that being in touch with your emotions and, you know, be a leader, as you say, but be able to balance that and show um, your emotions and how you feel truly and not have put a face on all the time is something that's attractive to me. But wouldn't it be fair to say that as a leader, you need to be able to lead regardless of how you feel? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can still- Like, nothing is contradictory. You need to be able to lead regardless of how you feel. Like, what does that even fucking mean? Yeah, I like, feel like- Like, are you in your house, like, watching, like, Marley and Me, and your girl looks Why at you? Why did you pick that one? Just because it's a movie, and you're, like, staring at the screen, and she's like, are you okay? And you're like, I need to be ready to leave, no matter how I feel. <laughs> like, what the- Like, what the- f These people talk like their relationships are, like, battle commando units, like, in the caves of fucking Afghanistan or some shit. It's just, like, so wild to me. Yeah. Uh, for you, but that doesn't mean you can you don't you can share in vulnerable. private. You can share in private yes. with your woman how you truly feel yes. and ask for her support. That's why she's there too, no? It doesn't work. A guy cried Smart. in front of me, and I never was attracted to him again. What is that? It's because you're like, shitty person. I'll take a I'll take a honey and coke. All right, on the couch. On the couch. You girls are making me very vulnerable right now. I just ordered a cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the couch. Someone said they want a vulnerable guy. Uh, why do you want a vulnerable guy? On the couch. Oh, go, I don't raise your hand. I it was go with the white top. Yeah. Give her a mic. Alicia Keys over there. What you got? Yeah. Why do you want a vulnerable man? Can we keep a mic over there, guys, and just like ready to rock? Yeah. Okay. So I think a man should be vulnerable to an extent. There was a guy that I was talking to. He did cry when he couldn't deal with a certain situation, and I don't like. I didn't Where's really, that guy like, now? 
Yeah. Where is he now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will say, at the time, I was, like, kind of turned off. Oh. But I think... So, see, like, and, and I love what women say... Cause and she's not even going to let her finish, right? The funny thing is, always, it's like, oh, where's I going to... Oh, you're not dating him? But it's like, okay, how many of these girls in the panel dated, like, a stoic fuckboy from Miami who also aren't dating him? Yeah. Right, yeah, like, there's probably a hundred of them, like, that have been dated by all of these girls that they're no longer with. But it's they always use, like, the one example of, like, oh, well, you're not with that guy anymore. So it must have been why you broke up with him. It's like, okay, it's so They'll stupid. use it both ways. So, like, for instance, if they want to prove that, like, girls will only... Uh, girls are only attracted to guys over six foot. Mm -hmm. Then they'll, if I say that's not true, they'll be like, "How tall was your ex?" And if I say over six foot, they'll say, "Oh, see that proves my point." And if I say like, if I were to say like, "Oh, he's under six foot," they'll say, "Oh, you broke up." Exactly. It, yeah. it proves no matter what. Oh, it's over yeah. six foot. You only want guys over six foot. Oh, they're yeah. People up, will say the same yeah, things with, like Melina. Like, oh, do you only date attractive guys? And you'll be like, well, no, I date like all types of guys. And I'm like, oh, what'd your last ex look like? Was he super attractive? And it's either like, if she says like, yeah, he was pretty attractive, it's like, oh, okay, well, then you only date attractive guys. Or if it's, he wasn't that attractive, well, that's why you broke up. It's a win-win yeah. no matter what. This is a it's called a force in magic where you like do things with a deck of cards mm. and you pretend like people are drawing a card but you're forcing them yeah. to draw the same card every time it's that type of like trick yeah. it's such a shitty rhetorical trick here's the thing that was a trick question ladies oh, you, i love how women say God. i want it to be vulnerable to an extent but you, the, yeah. the whole root word of vulnerability is that there is no extent you don't no know where it's gonna go like how fucking retarded is that that's such a stupid there's no extent to a vulnerability like this is the same of men and women by the way like no man wants a woman that's like a vulnerable piece of shit wreck all the fucking time either if you're just like crying and screaming and like have no emotional control whatsoever like that's true of men and women I, and i don't know anybody that would ever say vulnerability implies like unlimited emotional lack of control Mess. No, you don't even want to have a woman that's a mess. You, want, you don't want to have a woman that's just an absolute mess. Like, you don't want them oh, to cry When you're describing emotional men, oh, you're describing them as like, like you're crying all the time. But that assumes that men and women are the same. Um, if a woman is vulnerable, it doesn't have the same negative stigma. It doesn't turn us off to the same extent. And he doesn't even engage with the question. He, he, pull, he goes right into like, well, men and women are different. Mm -hmm. Well, women can be vulnerable. But the question wasn't whether women could or couldn't be vulnerable. It's that women could be too emotional as well. Like, that's true. Like, no guy wants to deal with a woman like that. Like, there's that's what the famous jokes, like, women being too emotional, you're on your period, blah, blah, blah. Like, not dealing with a crazy woman. Like, I guess his point was like that doesn't bar them from getting into relationships. But it, it absolutely would. You it, like maybe not in the very beginning, but if a woman was like fucking insane, you're not gonna last in any relationship with a guy unless the guy is a fucking loser. Maybe not that, but like I guess his point is like not that girls actually do this on his on their period, but if they think girls are like in, like emotional for twenty five percent of the month, like twenty five percent of their lifetime, he his point is like guys can't get away with that being like super moody and crying all the time. But the thing is, they show moodiness in like different ways. I feel like. Yeah, I think guys like can be moody like different ways. Like anger and like, yeah, the joke about like guys punching drywall and shit. Sure, but I still think there's a limit. Like a girl could not be unhinged on her period every single month. Like that would be unsustainable. I think you. I think that relationship would end. Like I think it'd be more moody or more emotional. Or whatever. Like, ideally, when a woman is into her twenties, like she's aware of like how emotional or moody she gets or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. When a man's vulnerable, because men don't date girls for security. Women date men for security. What? If I'm supposed to be your bodyguard and protect you, and I'm constantly crying and I... Like, and again, the, constantly the comparisons to bodyguards and, like, fighting and war. Don't know what the fuck's going on. You're not going to feel safe around me. That's just how it Can is. Can we even yeah, like, like, let's say you're, like, married to someone and his mom dies. Like, if he's, like, a little bit sad and you be there for him, like, you're not talking about that, right? You're talking about, like, day-to-day -day kind of stuff. Like a yeah. mess. That's but, okay, so let me frame the question yeah, yeah. this way, because yeah. I'll be here I am. And I like how he, he Myron doesn't get to answer it, and now Adam mm. fucking bails him out for that question. Yeah. Great. I've cried That's twice in the last... 10 years. Once, when my dad died. Okay. Okay, cried. Right. And I didn't even like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> we had a contentious relationship, but my dad died. Right. Second was when a long-term girlfriend of mine got cancer. It was 24 gorgeous cancer disasters. So it was really freaking tough. Do you I call cried. Cap? Oh. Not on the cancer part, but on him only crying twice in a decade? Uh, it's possible. Some people aren't. I'm not a crier. It's possible, depending on how you've been raised. I don't know. It just depends. Okay, so, but... I've done business deals that have gone like awry, not crying. Yeah. Right. I've lost employees, I've had major issues, I'm not crying. Right. So I think there's time and place for it. So I think what she's asking you is, yeah. like, when's the last time you cried? Like, if God forbid something happened to one of your parents, you would cry. Yeah, no, I mean, my grandma passed away a few months ago. I haven't actually shared this. And yeah, I went on, uh, there was a, a girl over, I went over and I, like, I went over on the balcony, I cried by myself, and like, I saw her coming, I was like, fucking, you know, <laughs> immediately. Really and I told her, but I told her, and I told her, I told her leave me alone. And, yeah. and the reason why is because even though it sounds so great to be able to open up in front of your girl, I understand that the female hard wiring is literally designed to look for security and be rep Like, not only is this psychopathic, it's just dead fucking wrong. It is. Like, I feel like girls get really turned, not turned on, but they love it. Like, they're always prodding for their boyfriend to, like, if, open up. You remember the picture that I drew earlier? Yeah. Assuming the guy is like a respectable, honorable, like integrity driven, masculine guy, like those moments of vulnerability are generally really special. And if you ever talk to somebody that's like manipulative of women, you the easiest way to manipulate women is through vulnerability. Like as soon as you start opening up to somebody, showing things to somebody that they think only they're seeing or that's really special, it's the easiest yeah. hook into a person's fucking. I guess his point is like it doesn't feel like real vulnerability because, like you said, it has to be on that chart somewhat. Like it still has to be controlled. So you still have to be like hyper aware then while you're crying that you're not overdoing it because there's no like 
schema versus girls they can like cry with their friends for like four hours and they're not going to look down on each other but i don't think guys could really do that maybe again in certain instances like they'll put up with it if like someone dies or something but i guess there's no like you get what i'm saying like i guess i I have to i might maybe it's because i'm not like a pathetic fucking loser but like i couldn't be with a girl that does that maybe these guys don't care but like if i was with a girl that was crying every single day i I wouldn't be able to huh well no but like any any time like i feel like the amount of like emotional crying and shit that i would allow for a woman would be about the same as what i would allow for a man i don't think i would but that's just i couldn't handle being with a woman that like like get what are some examples maybe like they're more likely to cry a little bit during movies or i'm just imagining like girls when they're drunk they're more likely to cry but it's like playful like nobody looks down on that it's just seen as like lighthearted, kind of i mean it depends what they're crying about but yeah i, I don't know like i've i've had bad breakdowns when i'm drunk i've seen other guys have really bad breakdowns when they're drunk i i don't know i just i would like to see this more in real life maybe i just don't see it as much but like yeah initially you did say four hours crying with her friends that sounds insane I, I was just envisioning like a night. Out. I just mean like. Do you have four hour cry parties with friends? That sounds really extreme. <laughs> I guess my point is like for him, there's no point in opening up to the girl because you still have to, in his view, probably still be hyper aware and like hyper control it, like the time and all that. Because I, I, I feel like if you're doing it, have, it's you seen, you're... have you seen Friends? A little bit. There's like this one bit where Rachel's trying to get this guy she's seen to open up because he's so stoic and then he finally opens up and she's so turned on and then by the end of the episode he's still like he every time something happens he's like crying and he wants to open up more and more because it's the first time in his life that he's like opened up and then she had she breaks up with him because she gets so turned off and she like sure. goes on to someone else obviously it's a tv show yeah but i guess the point is like if guys aren't used to like emotional regulation in that way it's like how do you know what the ceiling is for comfort and like yeah, the, no, the punchline of that, that was that yeah yeah i agree with that I, I so i've had a lot of girls that will tell me that sometimes they feel like when they're going on dates with guys they feel like it's the first time in their entire life this guy's like ever talked to somebody that has some level of emotional reciprocation because they immediately become their therapist i've had like a decent number of girls tell me that they've had a lot of first date experiences like that so mm-hmm. i'm sure there are some guys that do it but again that's not about like vulnerability that's just men that are being like emotionally retarded they don't want to like what's an appropriate level to show or not show but, but that's like, my point there's no um, there's not a lot of training on it. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. But the but the idea of like don't show any ever is like just as retarded as yeah. like be crying all the time. Yeah. Like it's not a healthy way to learn how to engage with your emotions. Mm-hmm. Pulse by inadequacy. So by you crying, you don't know how your girl's gonna react to it. For example, here's, here's yeah. an example right now. She when we asked her the question, she raised okay. her hand. I want a vulnerable man, right? So, but when we asked her, what ended up happening? He cried and it turned her off. Mm. You don't know how a woman can respond until it actually happens in front of her. Yeah. Every girl is different and how they respond to that, um, you opening up your emotions. So what I tell guys instead is, go ahead and be vulnerable with a man, no homo. And the reason why <laughs> okay. is because guys that you trust because men understand the masculine experience. Women don't. Women really don't know what it's like to be a man. Hell, most girls don't even know what men want, let alone understand a masculine burn performance. I, I'd have to go and dig through this again, but every psychology thing I've ever seen related to like theory of mind shows that women are be- are like way better at like empathizing and understanding other minds than men are. I don't know where they get this thing. It's like the fisher. Have you ever heard of like the fisherman analogy? What's that? No. Like, like a fisherman needs to know how to fish and he needs to know what a fish thinks. A fish doesn't need to know anything because all he's doing is getting caught by the fisherman. That's essentially like what they're arguing for. I don't know if they've ever used an analogy, but that's essentially what they're saying. Like a fisherman has to know what a fish is doing. A man has to know everything about a woman. A woman doesn't need to know anything about a man. Oh, I think I've heard something similar. It's like don't men don't ask women for dating advice. You don't ask a fish to learn. Like, oh, fish, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. But they do this yeah. like constantly, yeah. It's a masculine experience. So if you're, if you're able to open up with your guy friends, yeah, they'll make fun of you about it. You guys maybe go get a beer after whatever it is. But you're better doing that because there's not going to be the same negative ramifications to your relationship as a woman. Is there girls out, are there women out there that you could cry in front of and nothing will change? Absolutely. But are you willing to take that risk? Okay. I think, well, I think the issue yeah, is because well, like, both parties, we don't know the extent to it. So for example, let's say I cried to Melina. She may be like, you know what? I like this. This is great. But to um, later yeah. over here, I cried to her. Oh, you know what? That's a turnoff. So as a man, why risk it at all? What's the point? Yeah, yeah. Another thing too. Because you, you, like, you know who is the good one, right? If you try it sometime, if you know that your girl would leave you right away, she's probably not like the but, best but, person but, to but, date but, in that case, right? Well, once again, though, it's to make things work, right? And ultimately, why even risk it in the first place? Yeah, but in that case, you're never really gonna know if she actually cares about you. Uh, yeah, you can. Of course not, because if she would leave, if you show a little bit of emotions, she clearly no. doesn't care. But about most, you. She most, women, don't, most women don't want to be cried to. In com- no, that's not true. I think you feel really special. Here's, here's the thing. Opening it's up very easy to speak in 2020 hindsight on a podcast with hundreds of people, actually thousands of people watching and say, I wouldn't change. But it's much different when you're dependent on that man for your livelihood, for your home, for your income, for your food, for your children. You're going to be have way different priorities when you see that man cry in front of you and you understand that guy controls your future and he isn't like stable himself. You're going to think twice. It's always women typically always talk in ideals versus the real. The real is, is when this guy's supposed to be your leader, he's supposed to be leading you through life, which life is really tough and he can't even handle it. You're going to look otherwise. Do you think that the girl would have left you if she saw you cry on the balcony over your grandma? I'm sorry? Do you think that girl would have left you if she saw you cry? He's going to say, well, I don't know, but why risk it? That's my guess. What do you think he's going to say? Um, He might just be like, she'd respect me less a little bit as a man. Okay. I think he's going to say, uh, well, I don't know, but why would I risk it? 
That's my guess. Your grandma. No, she wouldn't have because I had built up a, a certain resume oh, with that girl. Okay. However, you wait, then why the fuck wouldn't he just? Do? Or you know, he, he said however. I'm not gonna risk it. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh God, I'm writing the script now. Yeah. Hey, I'm the writer now. <laughs> You're okay? ghostwriting. I am. Deserve less the sequel. Yeah. True. Okay, but you think there could be a risk in that case? There's a, there's well, a risk that, that is it that isn't worth it because I understand that the cornerstone of female admiration is respect. And I'm not willing oh, to. Oh, I guess that. we're co writing. We're co ghost writing. <laughs> I don't know what happens when you open up Pandora's box. We know women are emotional. We know women are radical. Women are controlled by their emotions. If she gets the feeling, right, which could be fleeting or not, that I'm not an adequate partner and me crying this temporary thing of weakness, yeah. that could fuck up the relationship long term. I can't tell you how many girls have come on the show. I love my guy, blah, blah, blah. I saw him cry for me. I don't know what happened. I just yeah. couldn't. I could never look at him the same. How, do you think we had a fresh, hold on, fresh, hold on, fresh. I feel like you want to answer this question as well. Yeah, yeah. Myron, I appreciate you. You just got vulnerable here that's with what me. That's I was going to say. That okay, look at all you got. I mean, your grandma died, bro. I think that's. Hello? When's the last time you had to cry? I don't. Period. <laughs> but, 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 okay, so I get the comment, right? Yeah. I'm heartless. Yeah. But I have emotions, but like, I just do it differently. I'll okay. go for a walk with my dog to the dog park. I'll like, drive my car. That's why I kind of let loose my emotions. So, for example, if my girl said, What? I don't know why. He's just so. You love him. Okay. So cute. Okay. Yeah, true. <laughs> his I want to see him. His he's dog. a really cute dog, yeah. Those are some probably really emotional dog I haven't seen dog his dog. Walks. You haven't? No. no. He's in the studio. He's really cute. Wait, see, his hey, dog lives at Myron's house, not his own house? I think he brings the dog to Myron's house sometimes because there's been times where I... Is the dog new? I feel like I asked that question that said he's had the dog for five years. I, I, but I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Interesting. Yeah. Put my dog to the dog park. I would like drive my car. That's why I kind of let, let loose my emotions. So, for example, if my girl says to me, hey, how are you feeling today? I feel great. Always great because, once again, I'm the raw. So why even put that in the atmosphere where I'm like, oh, I'm sad today? Yeah. Gotcha. So how are you feeling right now? I feel great. Hold on. 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 The whole point right. of this is to make things last with your partner, right? So I want to minimize all the things that can go wrong in this relationship. So ultimately, some girls answer, for example, I want a vulnerable man, vulnerable man to an extent. We don't know the extent, so I even go down that road. It makes gotcha. no sense. A big part of, uh, like, another thing too also, and it's going to sound fucked up or whatever, but as a man in a relationship with a chick, your job is to mitigate risk. Yep. And that's why, like, why do you guys think I tell you all the time, plan the date, have everything mapped out, you control everything. Because when you leave it up to a girl, if the date sucks, she ain't going to take accountability and be like, wow, I was really bored. It's your fault. It's your fucking fault. So you yep. might as well go ahead and control all the variables anyway and mitigate risk and not leave anything really open up to interpretation. That's what women want. Every girl here on this panel, they may admit it or not, is they just want to be pretty and fucking show up. That's it. They don't want to have to plan or do anything. Do you think that's true? Just show up. I feel like that's true, because I feel like every time we have a fight, I feel like you make me take responsibility for everything, and you say that it's all my fault all the time, you know? That's not gendered. It's because it's always your fault. They, they just want to be there and exist and be, have the guy be in the driver's seat at all times. That's what women really want and desire. That's why so many girls get mad. Plan a date. Guys don't plan nothing. I don't want to go to your house Netflix. That comes from their rooted mindset of they want a guy who's assertive, dominant, and a leader, and has his shit together. That's what they want. And you know, funny, I, I, gu I, I, I guarantee you, if your dad, who's your rock, crying in front of you, you'd be like, this is my hero. Why is he crying? Same thing for your man. Why do you want your man to cry? Even if I saw my dad cry, yeah. I would, I would, I mean, when that's his mom died. He cried. That's your father. Three and I didn't like disrespect yeah. him for that. Clearly, I was like, damn, I've never seen him cry before, and it feels insane. Like, that's reasonable. I got to though. see him. That, that's I, your I father. That was, that's yeah, that was a really, really wonderful thing because he's cry that moment. Yeah, because he right, cried well, about his mom. Uh, but, but wait, but can I ask you something? <laughs> they don't even let them talk. Think out there. Do you think there are women out there that would be okay with their man being emotional? I said that earlier. There are some, but it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. It's 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 a it's a minority. So again, I always give guys advice from a practical standpoint based on probabilities, not possibilities. The probability that she will lose respect for you is extremely high. So why risk it? Last point right here, and then we gotta get some super chats. I think, I mean, most women, like, women cry in front of them is very uncomfortable. Even, like, you know, guy friends that I've had or anything, it's very uncomfortable to watch men cry. And if you're sexually attracted to them and they cry in front of you, I think it, it really just, in a sense, gives you an ick. I mean, if it's your man that's supporting you and supposed to protect you, and then you're watching them break down and cry, it's kind of like, okay, well, if you're fearing for our security, well, then now I no longer feel secure. And it's kind of like you're depending on the man to keep you feeling secure. So if they're breaking down and crying in front of you, then you don't you kind of lose that secureness. And I mean, like, yeah, is there a few women out there that would be okay with that? But I mean, the majority of women want a masculine and dominant man. And I mean, the exception to the rule is those that are okay with a beta and a simp. And, and if that's what you like, then that's what you like. Wow, beta and a simp. You like, and it's okay for the. Did this woman say she's single, by the way? Just curious. I don't to cry in front of you because you're okay with that. I'm sorry. And what you said before, my my dad never seen him cry. Same. What was beautiful about him not crying was a family member in our in our family died. What was beautiful was watching him hold my mom. Why, why is he... I'm so cringe, dude. I hate this world. Not allowed to show emotions. It, no, I never said he wasn't allowed. I said it's funny too because like this is arguably like if you want to get super feminist, like these are the types of oppressive gender roles that patriarchy dictates to men is that you can't show out any emotion ever. You have to fucking kill yourself when you're sad and you can't talk yeah. to anybody about it. Like it's arguably, yeah. It was beautiful, like, beautiful, beautiful to see how he controlled. These girls are feminist. No, probably not. But I'm just saying it's ironic because like when you talk about like men's issues, like arguably this is one of the shitty aspects that society forces on men. But these guys like embrace it. They like love that shitty aspect of like men expected to be like emotionally fucking retarded, which I think is stupid. Mm. His emotions right. for his wife. But I mean, obviously they wouldn
Yeah. He's wrong. Yeah. Right. I have that shit inside for her. That sounds like he went through a lot of pain Thank you for that. to just keep that in and feel lonely. But he has to be ladies, really before we all get too emotional, we got to do some super chats. we got to pay some bills out here. To respect to everybody out there doing the super chats, we'll answer them again at the end of the show. Natalia, I've been fucking teaching you how to read. You're cleaning your ass off, girl. You're doing great. Hooked on Phonics work for you. That sponsored the show tonight. Uh, Nat, let's read some super chats. What are they? Is it 20 enough hey, or 15 enough? Uh, yes. How much? How much of the end of the show is like just questions from the audience? I don't think I want to fucking go through all that. Uh... Nat, I can relate. I know you can. I can. <laughs> you all the time. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Taught you. Once in a while, man. Once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Nat. Okay. Steal the right, show, let's girl. Get into it. Thank you all for the super chats tonight. We appreciate all of them from the dollars to the twenty to the hundreds of thousands. But we're gonna go through twenties and above. Look at Chris um, with the henny in the back. All right, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cheers yeah. to you, Chris. <laughs> By the way, we got about a half hour left. Last couple questions, and then everyone can have. Bathroom breaks, the party goes on. Yes. So thank you for bearing with us, everyone. Woo! Yes, thank you. America. Um, alrighty, so we have uh, the first one, various layers. Uh, CEO Network, let's go. Big Bossing, I appreciate you guys. Shout out to Fred hey, Myron. Uh, then we have uh, Prince J, Destiny is walking red flag. It's gonna make it hard to watch. Uh, then we have another one from Corentis, the dentist. <laughs> oh man, uh, too many girls, my head hurts already. Love PPD and Fresh and Fit though. I love the content for both channels. Uh, then we have the white supremacist, Myron. Yo, Adam, let me come on. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta What's read the names. Thing, uh, uh, then we have, uh, yo, Adam, let me come on the show and cook. And then we have, I did it, I did edit. Uh, can Myron say the catchphrase from the past couple days begins with F and has a G at the end in a T? No, no. No? no. The F word. Oh, uh, no, we're, we're, on, we're on YouTube. Nuggets. Uh, there you go. We're on YouTube. You uh, think Alvin and Preach are watching right now? Uh -oh. They probably are. Ooh. Any, any Alvin and Preach fans out there? Apple and Peach fans out there? Okay. Anus and Screech. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, when Mo came to us, he was a big supporter of them. And, you know, he was at his fattest and one, one of his lowest times. Then he got with us. First thing I, what was the first thing I told you, Mo, when you walked off the elevator and I met you? I said, God damn, fat shit. <laughs> and then ever since then, he's lost over 100 pounds, man. Like, over here at Pressure Fit, we actually get results. Yeah. And, and also, just so you guys know. So, so, Mo. Wasn't that your idea? Mo's a man. What? They just said they helped him lose weight. Wasn't that your oh, idea? Oh, no, yeah, that's what I took it from. Oh, I, oh, I just assumed you knew that, yeah. But oh, there, no. the guy, the big, um, not is it Chris? I don't think it's Chris. It's Big Mo. He was originally an Avon Preach fan. And no, then yeah, they, yeah, they just said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I thought it'd be funny. Oh, okay. And of God, of course. But he's also a sniper yeah. behind the scenes. He's, you know what I'm saying? So I got it. Over here, Big boys need love too. We don't react. We proactively make content over yeah. here. So okay. Nat, keep going. Alrighty, and then we have Josh G, fifty dollars. We appreciate you. Women are more emotional because they use the right side of the brain more than the left side, which is where emotions reside. They have periods, yep. which produces estrogen in their bodies. Estrogen produces changes in hormones, which in turn causes mood swings. Uh, then we have another one. We have John. Ask Myron why um, he was on Sneeko's stream with Clan Hood and saying disgusting uh, statements. I'm sorry, I didn't do that. Hey, man. Go on Rumble, guys, for the unedited version, man. Ten toes down on those fucking losers. Then we have um, uh, the next one by Brick Top. I respect your style, but you're rich. You must be a rich to get the bitch philosophy. Doesn't apply to 90% of the men and women. This is a rich person problem. Feels like y'all need to do some ayahuasca and learn love. What the fuck? Yes, do drugs. I don't know about no doing health. drugs, guys. Good solution, man. Yeah. Do drugs. Um, then we have uh, Vincent. Ladies, what are your opinion on mergers and acquisitions? I see what he did there. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, Heavy Metal Hotop Henderson. Shout out to my boys, Myron and Fresh, the real kings of value content of everyday living. The haters think we're over here busting grapes. Uh, then you haven't met the apes. If you know, you know. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, the next one, PJ Devo. Uh, big fan of uh, Fresh and Fit fans. Since I started listening to you guys, I've completed 75 Heart Challenge, began investing, and signed up for Hustlers University. Just celebrated my 28th birthday Monday, and the goal is millionaire by 30. Don D. Congrats. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Wait, wait, wait. This one right here. This one? Yep. Uh, okay, shut up. Watch, watch Malia get whooped is bringing joy. <laughs> Why are you making Malia. Me okay, we're gonna skip that one. And then we have the next one, Driven. Shout out to Fresh and Fit for helping me get through the hardest times. I am a man. I am a to I am today because of them. Congrats. Shout out to you, man. That's shout how we do it. Shout out mm -hmm. to you, bro. Awesome. And then we have Dark Daddy Dirty. Uh, I was making 35000 and disrespected my wife two years ago. After you guys, I am now making 75000 and my wife knows she's replaceable. $100,000 <laughs> salary forecast in three more years. I owe gentlemen deeply. Thank you. There you go, man. Uh, Okay. Uh, then we have a, uh, okay, so now we're gonna go to 50 and up, right? Okay, 50 and up, so we're gonna go to Uncle Luke. I saw you in here, Uncle Luke, I saw you. Uh, shout out to you boys, so Fresh and Fit, like up in the B. Uh, wish I was there. Um, I to believe that? I thought I saw you here. Nice. Who wants to see? Yeah, so. We gotta give them what they want. Last go Why does this guy look so upset? Every time I see him, he's like. Yeah. He looks really mad. Receipts. <laughs> <laughs> Last few, and I think these usernames are killing me. Fresh Balls said. It's not me. I don't know who that is. You guys are so funny. Uh, <laughs> all right, Fresh Balls. Uh, then we have another one. Um, it's in Chinese. I'm not too sure actually how to read that one. One here. Question for mine. What happens if you were paralyzed from an accident? You were unable to take care of your wives or present value uh, to then. Are they free to leave, or will you expect them to stay and take care of you? They're free to leave. 
Free to I understand that as a man, my duty is to provide and protect, and if I can no longer provide that, then I'm virtually useless, and that's just the cold hard reality of the world. Damn. 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 That's, yeah. I'm gonna wheel you around, bro. Are you fresh? Yeah. You can do it for you. Like that's I I I understand for full time. You know, this is how it's how it is in Animal Kingdom. If she stays, that'd be awesome. But I'm not gonna sit there and expect it. Whenever you have expectations, that's when you set yourself up for failure. What do I talk about? Mitigate risk. That's why you must be successful because the world is a cold hard place. And so first, you women, you're not gonna hate them because you just know how they move, and it's so really on you. Does he think like men yeah. post retirement age it's justified for their wife wives to leave, or is he saying no because they can still financially provide? And they probably say the wives are so old that's all they can get at that point anyway. Well. Maybe the original wife aren't like the new wives younger. Well, the new wife would just monkey branch to the next better guy, right? That's probably what they would say, I guess. No, he's stating the hardcore facts. Most women will probably leave your ass. Yep. A good one will stick around. Yeah. And those I, women are rare. The most dangerous words are should, could, and would. Yeah. It needs to be what is. Damn. Seriously. Nah. Um, that's it for the 15 up chats. Thank you for those chats. We'll be reading the rest of them later. Make sure you guys subscribe to both the channels, Fresh and Fit, Valuetainment. We appreciate you guys. Like the video. Who's excited to be here? Come on, guys. Here we go. Yeah. Show some love. By the way, if the Valuetainment audience is out here and you haven't subscribed to Fresh and Fit, show some love. Subscribe yes. to Fresh and Fit. If you're a Valuetainer, show them some love. If you're a Fresh and Fit fan and you're here for Valuetainment for the first time, give a like. Show some love. We got Myron. We got Fresh out here. Give it up for these guys for being here. And give it up for the... And give it up for the beautiful ladies that are here. Yes, even Melina. Woo! Give it up. Oh, wow. it's it's no time. Time. We, do, we do appreciate you in all your beauty and all your glory yeah, and no, even you in all your delusion. Meltime. You love Meltime, huh? Let's go. You do. What did I tell you, you about talking when I'm talking? <laughs> Frank, do we need a prank situation? Okay. All right. Last couple questions and we'll wrap up and then we're going to get a party started for the VIPs in the back. So, uh, I want to talk about something a little, you know, maybe something a little more that Fresh is into these days. I don't know. Some, some, <laughs> yeah. oh love, you know, it's a four letter word. <laughs> this guy, bro. No, just <laughs> love, marriage, you know, that's the next phase. I, I, you know, I'm looking for love in my life. Whether I get married or not, I don't know, the government probably not, but I think we all want love. Uh, you were on a, an episode of Grillin' with Cheyenne recently, yeah. and she was, you guys had a conversation about a four letter word known as L-O-V-E, yeah. love, right? Um, you said you're never gonna fall in love with a woman. You, you touched on that earlier. Yeah. Now, let's play this clip and let's talk about it on the other side. On women is gonna change the moment you like meet the right woman. Yeah. That's cute, but no, I mean, I, I, I have, <laughs> I've had love for women, but I'm never gonna fall in love with women because when you fall in love with a woman, what happens is you start to lose grounding and you start to lose that rational thought. A lot of the stupid things that men do is because of love. So you're scared to be vulnerable. No. And let yourself go and be in love. Like you're gonna block yourself from like emotion and to feel for something that could be really amazing for you because you're scared to be vulnerable. No, because I understand that men and women are different, and men love women far differently than women love men. Men love women for real. Women love men. Women love men for real. No, they don't. Exactly. Women love men under the premise that they provide value. Men love women idealistically. Women tend to love men more from an opportunistic standpoint. And your standpoint. I like how this whole point of view is that if a woman gets like too old or if she's had too many dicks in her, you have to dump her immediately for like the next youngest woman. And you should always be fucking like three to five to 20 women at the same time. But like men love idealistically and women are the opportunistic ones. That's very funny to me. No, he's saying you can still idealistically fall for a woman with a high body count. He's just saying she's more likely to cheat, she's more likely to divorce, and all these things. So yeah, I but think that's, that, why he's that, that's to not love even in true in their own. Way. Sure, but that's not even true in their own ideology, and statistically, it's not true either. This Isn't is that retarded. what's true in their ideology? In their ideology, that he's saying that women don't love for real because they're opportunistic, but men fall in love for real. But then he's also saying that men can fuck five different women at the same time, and a woman is going to be so attached to her one man that when she's is really in love with a guy, she's got eyes for no one else. How is that a woman being opportunistic and the man being idealistic? Because he's providing value is his argument. How, what, how does that map onto anything that was just said? What do you mean? He's saying men love idealistically. He makes it sound like when a man loves, he throws his whole life and being into it. And then he says women love opportunistically. So if something better comes along, she's going to ditch you. But in their world, they're saying that one man can fuck 5, 10, 15 women at the same time because he's built that way. But a woman, when she's into a man, she has eyes for nobody else. In that case, it makes oh, the I woman see, see. sound idealistic yeah. and the man sound opportunistic. That's what it seems like. Mm. That's how I felt. Like. Okay, dude, you've spit so much game in your days, both of you guys. Uh, one of my favorite things that you've said is that women love idealistically, I'm sorry, men love idealistically, yeah. women love opportunistically. Yeah. Fully co-sign on that, fully understand that if you're not providing value to a relationship, if you're not being that, you know, man who checks off all the boxes, good looking, funny, attractive, smart, cool, good with the kids, good with the mom, but all, be nice, but not too nice, be rough, but don't be too rough, I don't wanna end up in jail. There's so many different situations a guy has to bring to the table, whereas a guy's just like, listen, be hot, don't give me a fucking headache, and just be an asset, not a liability. Yeah. So, um, I see all the ladies like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the concept of love, the concept of, of uh, a woman loving opportunistically, a man loving idealistically, break that down and let's see what the ladies have to say. Um, well, so, I always say that the girl has to like the guy more and it's acceptable for the woman to be head over heels over the man, but the man can't be the same way. And the reason why the woman needs to be infatuated with you and deep in love is because you need to overcorrect 
for the current sexual marketplace disparity. What do I mean by this? I mean women have far more options than men do. If you take a celebrity guy that checks off a bunch of boxes, he doesn't even have a fraction of the options that an average woman has. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this has been shown on dating apps, on social media, etc. It's a fact. This isn't even like an opinion. So for you to overcorrect for the abundance of options that women have, she must literally damn near worship the ground that you walk on so that you can keep her loyal. Okay? And One of the things I hate too, and a lot of their ideology um, revolves around this, is they constantly do this thing where they conflate dating with fucking. And it makes me not take anything they say seriously sometimes. Do they? Like, like what he just like, said there, if you apply it to dating, is absolutely not true. A, a normal woman doesn't have anywhere near the options that a celebrity guy does when it comes to dating. When it comes to fucking, almost any woman will have more options than almost any guy. That's true. But dating, absolutely not. But they always conflate that when it's convenient for them. Or do you think that like an ordinary woman has more dating opportunities than like a, a Hollywood celebrity? Yeah, I guess not. No. Yeah, but for fucking, probably. Mm -hmm. A normal yeah. woman could get on Tinder and fuck 100 guys in one night. And even a celebrity might struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, but they but they constantly like have the two. And the only way you're gonna do that, she needs to be head over heels over you. And women are emotional creatures and they're controlled by their emotions. So she must love you more than you love her and she must be infatuated with you for it to work, especially in 2023 when they have all these things going on. Myron's counter is, but they have the opportunity. Yeah, I, I'm, not, that, I'm sorry, but that argument is not compelling to me at all. Um, I think men have the opportunity as well if they're in spaces with women and they're talking to women. Um, a woman, just because she fucks a guy doesn't mean she's any closer to dating a guy. I super don't believe that. Um, there's a ton of women that Leonardo DiCaprio could fuck. There's a ton of women that I could fuck that I would never date and no amount of fucking is gonna change that. No amount of fucking for a celebrity is gonna change that. If you're just an ordinary girl and you're just there to like fuck a dude, you can't fuck your way into a relationship any more than a guy can friendship his way into a relationship. Like it just doesn't That's work. That's weird. That I've heard Brian on whatever say that like women can uh, exercise their like sexual leverage to get into relationships. Yeah, so they say that is, a like, lot. The precipice of a relationship. Yeah, they say that a lot, but that was true. Fuck boys wouldn't exist. Like it's absolutely not true. Like there are some women that can absolutely get fuck zoned and they're just stuck there where a guy is like willing to hook up. He'll text you at 2 a.m. But he's never going to fucking date you. I guess you could use the prospect of sex to get the date with them. And then in yeah. theory, you could like withhold sex. It'd be a whole game versus but the you celebrity would, the guy. The, the, the just withhold sex. It, the guy's yeah. just fuck boying. He's not going to date you. But he'll date someone. You even just said yourself, there are some girls that you'll date and there's some you won't. Yeah, but the ones you so, date aren't fucking their way into dating from like not being able to. It's not like because they fucked you. Now a girl that you wouldn't date is like, because, like, but don't like those two categories aren't set in stone, right? Like there's something the girl you wouldn't date could do or present differently to become, right? Or no? I I don't think so. Like if it's somebody that you, I, I mean like what you're talking about isn't. My point is like, I see it like this, like there's a big circle and those are girls you'd fuck. And then in that there's a smaller circle, which is girls you'll date, but that's yes. still within the circle, the bigger circle of girls you'll fuck. Sure. So can't they all like, isn't there an equal chance in theory for all of them to like swim into the middle? No, because you're assuming that they get to the middle by fucking. They just ha there happen to be some girls you would date Not that by, would also. But I'm saying they can get into the outer circle just by being a woman and being someone you want to fuck. Yeah, and but you don't get any closer to the inner circle. But there's other things they could do at that point. I don't think so, but maybe. But then what delineates the inner circle? Girls that have qualities you could fuck. So like theoretically, I could find a hundred girls that are, they're not involved in anal line shit, they'd still live with their parents, they're just kind of losers or whatever, 25 years old, they're recently hot, um, and I see them and I would fuck them, but no amount of fucking is gonna make me wanna date them, right? I didn't say any amount of fucking, I'm saying just the fact that you wanna fuck them gets them into the first door, and then there's other things they could do to get to the second door. Like you just said, the fact that they live with their parents, they could like- Yeah, but there are gonna be, them. but if there's a girl that I really wanna date, like, or that I feel like I would wanna have, like I would wanna pursue something with, she doesn't have to fuck me to get to the inner circle. Like I would already be pursuing that girl. Like if there's a girl who's like, oh fuck, like this is somebody that I really want, or I think this is somebody that I would get along with, and I start to like build that relationship or have that chemistry with that person, it's not like they have to fuck me in order for me to consider them in a dating circle, I think. That's not what I said, that was my whole point. Like that girl could even withhold sex and make you more interested, like that was, my point is just you even being sexually attracted to them gets in them through the first door was my point. So I think that's their point. And that's what I've I don't think yeah. that's their point, but I do agree with what you're saying. There's gonna be some base level of attraction that's probably true. But like these guys are talking about how like fucking creates the opportunity for dating. But I feel like the opportunities for dating are a bit separate than the opportunities just for sex. Yeah. I guess I can't fully see the male perspective, so I don't know. Sure, okay. On, that can come in and fuck up your relationship. You got fear of missing out. You got Instagram. You have this certain lifestyle that's reported to young women that they can go out there and have it all, have a career, get a chat, and all this other stuff. You, to overcorrect for all the fuckery that's going on, the, you know, the breakdown of family, the breakdown of religion, the breakdown of institutions that used to shame promiscuity, none of these buffers, aka training wheels, are in place anymore. So the only weapon you have as a man is your masculinity and your ability to garner respect from your woman to the point where other guys are invisible. So she must love you more than you love her. She must feel like she has the prize. She must be head over heels for you, especially in 2023. Gotcha. Uh, what do you want to add to that, Fred? Um, 
I would say that is definitely true. However, I think most guys don't understand how much of a full package you have to be. So, for example, guys are focused on game only, or focus on money only, or focus on looks only. And that plays a role, but you need all three. And for the most part, if a woman's gonna love you, she needs to respect you. But respect comes with you becoming that man of value, which means once you're working on all three, once you become that man, then she can finally respect you and give you that love. The harder the girl is, the higher level Pokemon she is, which means you need to command and have more <laughs> badges, okay, that you beat more gym leaders, you've accomplished more things in life for her to take you seriously. If you're a bum and you only, you know, got a pewter gym badge, right? Shout out to all my Pokemon people out there, you beat Brock, right? And you get a level 70, you know, Charizard, you say flamethrower, it's gonna go to sleep, not gonna take you seriously. That's how hot women are. When women have more options, they behave differently. Or when the more attractive a woman is, the more she can command from a man. So if you're not that guy, you're gonna deal with it somehow. I've seen plenty of guys that have been like, how'd that guy get that fucking girl? She's really hot. Let's say he was extremely. See all the time in Miami, yeah. Right, but Pete Davidson. Hello, what's going on there? Right, like he'll get the girl because of his charm or his looks, but it doesn't last long because he's not able to provide security. Or the more common one, ugly dude, no frame, has money, gets the girl, but she walks all over him. She's going out with her girls. She's fucking other guys. She looks at him as a place holder boyfriend. I want guys to not be like the whole like over six foot X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like yeah, because any what what like ninety eight percent of well. Actually, we can I just mean by using Pete Davidson as an example, people will say like, oh, it's not his humor, it's his uh, height and his money. But now they're kind of doing it in reverse by being like, oh, see, because he was an alpha, that's why these women keep dumping him. Mm -hmm. They're doing the magic card. What do you call it? Magic check? Forced card? It's like a force, so yeah. Uh, okay, so men will have six relationships, two of which will last one year, but women will have five relationships. Men and women both. Okay, so that means that five out of six relationships uh, about, or four out of five relationships, so 80% of relationships are failing, right? Regardless mm -hmm. of, yeah. Yeah. Placeholder, I want you to be the holder. And here's, benefit, here's the benefit of that. Yeah. By the way, I just gotta tell you something. I've agreed they're with failing, everything you said all day today. I guess other their than... point is like, you could still deduce things from like, which ones are succeeding. Like maybe, I don't know. Right. I mean, how many people is like Brad Pitt dated? Mm -hmm. And like, doesn't he check like every box? How many people is, I'm, I'm sure we can go through like really hot celebrities that have had multiple girlfriends and they probably checked, right? but I don't know. And I had no clue you're going with the Pokemon thing. Uh, I've never played Pokemon. I don't that's know. Fine. Pokemon. So you gotta, basically, basically, you gotta beat people, get gym badges, and that will uh, increase your ability to control Pokemon so that they listen to you when you say certain things. Yeah, it's, it's a video game. Yeah, I'm trying to dap you up here. That's okay. Sorry. Sorry. So, talk and, and also, right, fresh. ultimately, here's the benefit for a guy. If you, if you become that guy of value that a woman actually wants, she can't even see other guys. Which means if she really loves you, she wouldn't even want to fuck other people. Which means she won't, she won't cheat on you because you're that guy mm -hmm. for her. I'll put it this way. This is gonna be fucked up, but here's a new one for y'all. Value tainment only. Hey. All right. Woman's like a horse almost, all right? Oh, shit. The higher your value is, the stronger the blinders are where she can only see forward. The lower value you are, the more you don't have blinders on her. Yeah. And I don't say that to be an asshole or whatever, but the men are in here, so I need to display it in a way that you guys understand because men and women are very different. Men operate really well with analogies. So the higher value, those blinders are fucking nice and strong, dark. She can only see ahead, and that's with you in the front. However, when your value is low, she has no blinders. She can see left, right, etc. Oh, that leader looks better over there. Wait, he has other horses with him? What the fuck? That bitch's mane looks good. I want that. She gonna go somewhere else. So your value needs to stay high all the time, guys, so those blinders are always focused on you. Respect. By the way, ladies, let's run through this real quick. Uh, back to your initial point where you think that the woman needs to be more in love with the man, the man needs to be more in love with the woman, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies, and again, for the, the ladies who like being diplomatic, you have to pick one. Don't be like, we want to both be in love at the same time. I get it, Melina, I already know what you're gonna answer. <laughs> do you want to be more in love with the man or do you want him to be more in love with you? Go. I have to be more in love with him so I can be submissive, serve him, and do really anything he asks me to do. I hate, I wish for these shows, you shouldn't be allowed to go more than once. I don't like the people that are in the ecosystem and they're, they're just there as like to mirror back like every single thing they've said is so fucking annoying, mm -hmm. oh my God. It's also the same. Same answer? Same answer. Okay. Miss Maria? Same. Same, okay. Sarah? I hate to say it, but yeah. I want to okay. be more in love with yeah. I, I'm changing as I, as I grow yes. up, and I'm okay with that. Look at that. She's <laughs> learning how to go. Melina? This is a stupid question. <laughs> oh, God, no. I'm oh, sorry. Is this yeah, okay, so what's your answer? I don't think I have one. I think I want it to be equal. Can okay. I say that? Bruh. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I want to have a difference? Like, either I feel like a loser, or I'm not like attracted to Got it. Him. Which one should I pick? Like, next. Why are you wasting uh, time? I'm more in love with my man. What's that? More in love with my man. You want to be more in love with your man? Give me your name again one more time. Amy. Amy, yeah. okay. Amy the Aussie, what do you pick? I'd say the same thing. I think to, in order to induce those desirable qualities in a relationship, I think it's very difficult to do if the man is more into the woman than the other way around. Mm. Okay. okay, and you again? Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, I want to be more in love. I want to feel like I'm literally going to die without you. The reality is actually the women are giving the right answer. Um, you do want to be more in love. Oh, after you got huh? her answer. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't need her answer because I'm not fucking retarded. I understand how this shit works, okay? I'm actually but, surprised they're all saying this. Well, they're all saying it because they'll have to fall in line because because women are group thinkers. <laughs> and when you pull women, but unironically when a few, like it's very hard to stand up and be like giving a different answer than every woman before you, because especially because I don't know if you notice how yeah, these shows work. Yeah, that was kind of the whole point of our argument last you week. You were wrong about that. But I'm showing you that, um, or I'm, one of the things I'm saying is that like on these shows especially, if you give a contrary answer, not only are you being contrary to all the other women, anytime one of these women give an answer that falls outside of the red pill, Myron's gonna ro uh, grill them. So you have to be ready to like, not only say no and be contrary, now you gotta defend it against Myron the masturbator as well. Um, 
But the thing that I said about um, it's more attractive when you're more into the, the guy than the guy is into you, I, I think that's true from the one point of view. But from the guy's point of view, it's also more attractive when you're more into her than she is into you. The red pill people might not think of it, but in my personal opinion, um, and this is true, I know it's true, um, one of the biggest turnoffs, absolutely, male or female, in any relationship ever, is when somebody is too clingy. Nobody likes it. Now, for their red pill ideology, they'll say that they do because it, they have to because it fits their thing. But if you're with a clingy woman, she could be the hottest woman in the world. That shit is the most disgusting, unattractive, annoying shit. And it will flaccid your dick. It will dry your pussy. It is the worst fucking feeling in the world is having people that are like constantly hounding you, constantly need everything from you. Like you're not picking up your phone when they're calling, caught, like spamming, blah, blah, blah. Like it's the worst thing in the world. I guess it sounds like you're just conflating being in love with being clingy, which kind of just affirms Myron's point that you shouldn't be uh, in love because then the girl's going to find it a turn off. No, that's not true. You can be in love without being clingy. But I think when they're saying I want to be because when you're saying somebody's more in love with one person than the other, I think you're implying that's like, excessive. No, no. Yeah, I think you're implying because otherwise, what does it mean? You're implying some level of clingy because it sounds like when they're saying or you're implying because one here's party the thing, has less interest. Yeah. Or here because here's what I would believe. If you would have flipped it and say, well, what if the man is more into you? What they're going to say is that guy's a simp. But being a simp doesn't mean you're more into the girl than she's into you. It means you're being clingy, I think. Mm. But that, that's why I think it's a, yeah. Like I cannot function without my man. But the reality is both people should have roughly the same interest in each other. Any other answer is fucking retarded. You want to, you don't want to be way more invested in somebody else yeah. than they are into you, especially as a woman. It just surprises um, me to hear this because I always hear women, at least on social media, say that like relationships only work if the guy's more interested than the girl. So that's why it surprised me to hear them all say this unanimously. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, they're, it's this ecosystem, so... Wow. Gigi? I agree. You agree? Yeah, definitely more in Okay, love don't pull the Melina, answer the question. No, I, I love being in love and I do, um, I guess, I think relationships where the woman is more in love um, last longer. Okay. Um, yeah, but he, he still needs to put me on a fucking pedestal, you know? And it doesn't even make sense because, like, I mean, like, men are more likely to step out and cheat. So, like, how does the guy, like, it feels like the guy probably needs to be more in love if we're just going by, like, a numbers perspective, right? Like if a guy's more likely to cheat anyway, and cheating is probably one of the things that will ruin relationships, right? Wait, can you restate? If you had to choose running by the numbers, who's more important to have more love for the other side? You'd probably say it's probably more important for men too, because men are more likely to step out. My guess is gonna be is if the woman loves a man more than the man loves a woman, he's probably more likely but to step out. But these men see sex so differently. Like men says fucking another girl is no, just like taking No, I understand that pants. they would say that that's fine, but I'm yeah. saying that if we were just run the numbers, it would probably make more sense from a data-driven point of view to say men should probably be more into the women because men are more likely to cheat in a relationship and ruin it that way. But obviously in their point of view, there is no such thing as cheating because men can fuck anybody, right? Or that it's meaningless is my point. Sure. Yeah. But but nobody else in the real world. That has nothing to do with love. Yeah, but nobody else in the real world sees it that way. No women is okay with their man cheating on them, except for in these fucking spaces, I think. But they see it more equivalent to like same way you could be in love with your girl but still watch porn. That has nothing to do with your level of being in love with her. So I'm saying they see it is the exact same way. Yeah, I know. But I, I don't agree with that, obviously. Oh, good. Uh, good. Oh We're going to break her one of these days. Right. Uh, ladies on the couch, let's get them on the screen as well. So in order for the relationship to succeed long term, the woman has to be more in love with the man. And the statistics that show that 80 to 90 percent of the separations are initiated by women show that as fact. Wait, I was uh, almost separations are initiated by women show that as fact, man. And the statistics that show that 80 to 90 percent of the yeah, OK, so this was the one thing I wanted to do a ton of reading on to fight on this divorce shit, because I think every single thing that gets stated about divorce is fucking retarded and fucking wrong. Even that 80% number literally comes from a single survey of a bunch of couples, and there were like 80 couples that ended up, they got this like 80% number from. So this 80% number is already fucking dog shit, number one. Number two, one of the reasons why women initiate divorce more is because women need to initiate that divorce, oftentimes for reasons related to children. Men don't have to initiate divorce. Um, I mean, I actually, I did this with my ex-wife, actually. Um, we got married when I was 19, and I think we got divorced my certificate's somewhere in here because I need it for my granddad. I think when I was like 23 or 22. Because like, uh, but we also didn't make kids. But like, wow, I don't need to get divorced. I mean, arguably you should have protect your assets and shit. But if you're like a normal person, like who the fuck cares? Um, but if you're a woman and you've got a kid, you have to get divorced because now getting that kid healthcare, um, getting you uh, qualified for financial aid mm. or for state aid, you have to get that divorce because you have to get separated from the man so you don't have to use his income for markers for state aid, especially if you have kids. And because I've had like five social workers email me this because they get so pissed off every time it's brought up. And they, that's one of the things they consistently say is women have to get a divorce mm. whereas men can just like step out and they kind of like yeah. break up and a man doesn't ever really need to get a divorce who the fuck cares if he's still married or yeah. not yeah that's interesting the separations are initiated by women show that as fact hey y'all y'all are gonna hate me y'all are gonna hate me but i feel like 
merch. I feel like the guy should love more than the woman because you have to show your interest. Period, queen. You go, girl. All right, next. Well, let me ask her a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would it be you see, like, oh, so, so, right? Do you see what's happening? Like, so she bucked the normal opinion of the women, and now she's gonna roast for. And now Myron's gonna come in and like grill her on it. Like, it's really hard to have a contrary opinion here. I think. Say that the interest is already shown because he's approaching you. He's providing so it's, for you. You don't he's think it's actually with... group think. You think it's more so that they're like uh, faking it, so they're not getting grilled. Yeah. Because you said if group we thing. we joked about no, yeah, I don't think I think because we joked about yeah, doing yeah. a show like this. If we got if I put like twenty weak men on a panel, they're gonna fall over like dominoes. Of course, like they already. No, I'm not talking shit or anything. I'm so sorry. I don't mean this like this. But like if I'm on like a political panel and there's like nine people on it, men or women, if I'm the first one to answer a question and I give an answer, often it's like, oh yeah, I agree with Destiny, I agree with Destiny, I agree with Destiny. Because of course, because especially given the, depending on the issue, if we had like a show where we got like 20 frat boys on and we asked like a certain type of question, like depending on how brutal we are and depending how weak the people we choose are, yeah, they're going to just roll over. It'd be interesting to see. I can't like envision it because I haven't sure. seen something like that. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be kind of already implied that you don't need to do that? Yeah, and I can show him my affection. Wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Vox Cordis, this excludes families with kids, right? Because I feel like as soon as kids are involved, when the dad walks out, he will definitely be held accountable for child support and stuff. No, you can't get child support unless you file for divorce, right? That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Let's say that you're married and you've got children or whatever. If the dad leaves, mm. then you're just fucked. But if the woman wants child support, she's got to initiate the divorce to do that. Why the fuck would the dad initiate divorce? The sooner he initiates divorce, the sooner he's on the hook for things like child support. Right. So it'd be interesting to see like which, uh, what percent initiates separation then. Because maybe men are that's, more likely to walk away, but then women are the ones who, who officially sever ties so they can get those benefits. Yeah, I've tried to look at this, but it's really, really hard to find data on these types of questions. I, yeah. I don't know if it's not well studied enough. Like I had one lady who's like a PhD researcher who was giving me like two studies, but they're like from 2014, not that old. Uh, but it's really, really, really hard to get data on like when is the relationship actually over. Yeah. But like if you really think about it, that's kind of a hard question. Like if I think about like a lot of my relationships, like when were they actually over? It was probably like months before we truly broke up. And then like whose fault is it? I don't know. That's hard to choose. And then like what was the like inciting event? Like yeah, I don't know. Um, relations are really complicated, you know. Uh, yeah. So is it like a race to file divorce? If not, then men are fine paying child support, etc. Well, I'm just saying like it's in, it's in the woman's prerogative to file the divorce. It's not in the man's prerogative. You don't gain anything for the man from filing from divorce if you're the one that's outrunning the woman and if she's going to be the primary caretaker for the children, right? She don't need no man. Uh, okay, that's fine. I, I'd rather be a successful woman. Go, queen. Period. But, if I, if I, I, but you see, like, so she answered, like, yeah, and now they're, like, roasting the fuck out of her, mm. right? I think she answered that question earlier. What's her name again, by the way? My name is Mulan Monet. Queen. Mulan Monet. Okay, girl. Yeah. Uh, Mulan, but yeah, would you rather I'd be rather, single rather, and sorry. successful? Yeah, single and successful? Or I mean, like, for, actual, for an example of the thing, did you watch any of my debate with Rolo? Rolo was very submissive and agreeable to everything I was saying. And that's fucking Rolo who's like willing to fight with everybody. I think if you lined up 10 guys on a panel and you got like very strong argumentative debated people, I think that they're likely to kind of like, yeah. Like one thing I mentioned earlier for the way that these shows are set up and the reason why you get a certain impression of women, not you personally, but, but why people will get a, an impression of women and an impression of men is because you're essentially getting three or four adept debaters. Lord like, of the Rings this, character. You're Aragorn, Gimli, yeah. and fucking, yeah. And F Frodo, not Frodo, the, yeah. the cool people. And then you've got 20 orcs who are like girls with like one thousand followers on Instagram, they're not seasoned debaters. They can get kicked off at any fucking time. Just you've been on Fresh and Fit, right? When guys are on even from the very beginning, I don't think it's like intentional, but there's like psychological warfare that happens like you walk in the door. The guys are kings, they get to sit down, we get to keep our phones, like we got it like we have like the run of the mill. Oh, when, I like remember. you people are there, you mean? Um when the men go on the show, right? Mm. That's how we're, like we yeah. But for women, you all sit down, you all have to turn your phones into a bin, you're not allowed to have anything. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you're not allowed to drink, they be careful, no shots of alcohol, no, no, that's what they do now, right? Yeah. Chris will sit there and talk, listen ladies, you have to do this, don't do this, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 you just make sure you're looking at me, take your gun out, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But as a guy, yeah. So like from the very beginning, the tone is set. Yeah. You've got like, yeah, you've got a bunch of goblins and then like three literal fucking hero men. And of course, like this is how all these panels go, you know? Mm -hmm. A happily married Period. housewife. I'd rather be single and successful all right. because- How old are you again? I'm 27. All right, you got about three years until epiphany phase. Uh, go ahead, next. This is a question. Yeah, that's another trick question. There's no right answer she could have given. If she said she was 30, they'd say like, oh, well, look, this is a feminist yeah. loser. If she's 20, oh, well, you'll know when you're 25 yeah. how wrong you are. Like, there's no right answer, right? About love and you're loving your man, him loving you. For me, it has to be that there has to be a love to God first before any of us can actually- Now this ain't a religious show. Stop the cap. <laughs> oh, fuck, wait, why the fuck did this just- Well, it was already over though. 
Oh, no. Now, with a show of hands, ladies, right? Okay. So it seems to me from all of your different answers, let's go ahead and peg it around 20, right? We'll do Fuck. Do you have any idea what time stamp we were at, guys? Fuck me. All of them are delusional. I don't care about what they think. I care about what I think in my experience. They keep it simple, right? Dude, average average way to have sex with a bunch of girls. So let me ask the ladies. That's a feminine trait. That can't do anything. But like some sort of motivation. You want to attend the heels. What is actually wrong? I'm getting a red pill right now. Yeah. 241.17. Forward. No shot. That guy was making that up. I don't believe him. <laughs> While also being able to be in their masculine and chase a career, etc. And, and I'll take it a step further. If they do decide to chase that career, a masculine one at that, they have an inherent advantage. He's, he just made that up. 241.17. <laughs> Men are sexualizing us, and one, you want us in the clubs, you want us at your table. You he literally made it up. Fuck that guy. <laughs> what? Don't ever believe shatters. Look up the thumbnail for that black lady. Um, Love, right? Um, oh, you okay. said you're head over heels over you, and women are emotional creatures. And all right, whatever, but the men are in here, so I need to display it in a way that you guys are going to answer. <laughs> do you want to be more in love with the man, or do you want him to be more in love with you? Go. I'm definitely more in love Okay, with don't pull a Melina. Answer the question. That's fine. I'll, I'd rather be a successful Oh, my woman. God. Go, queen. I'm so good. I found it. Okay. Oh, my God. Period, but if See, I, if would you I rather be, I don't love, think you answered that question earlier. What's your name again, by the way? My name is Mulan Monet. Queen. Mulan Monet. Okay, girl. Yeah. Uh, Mulan, but yeah, would you rather I'd be rather, single rather, and sorry. successful? Yeah, single and successful or a happily married Period. housewife? I'd rather be single and successful. All right. Because How old are you again? I'm 27. All right. You got about three years until epiphany phase. Uh, go ahead, next. This is a question about love, and you're loving your man, him loving you. For me, it has to be that there has to be a love to God first before any of us can actually... Now, this ain't a religious show. We're not doing this. Right. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Okay. Uh, in order for each person to love one another, each person has to love God, so that way that marriage or that relationship can move forward. Because without the love of God, it's not sustainable at the end. Okay. So, we have to bring it in the norm. Okay. And, and yeah, moving forward with, with God. So, so what's the answer to the question after God gives his blessing on your marriage? <laughs> then my parents. Okay. All right, next. <laughs> yes. Next. Are you doing too much? Yeah. Come on. You're doing too much. <laughs> she loves God or parents. Forget about her man. Go ahead. I definitely agree that the woman needs to love more the man just because, especially with modern society, you need to be submissive and trying to battle that masculine energy. Like, nobody believes this naturally. Like, these are red pill talking points mm -hmm. I've heard. Like, in normal society, what woman would be like, yeah, like, I think it's important to love your man more so you're submissive and you're not channeling your masculine energy. <laughs> like, it's just like, it's literally Myron talking points verbatim. They're like programmed. Love needs to be above. So, program and from so, what though? Because I don't think women program really from watch. Myron. FNF. No, but these women do, the ones that are in this orbit. That's why I'm saying that, like, how do you don't the think repeats. they get it from their own, like, female equivalent? No shot. Because the female equivalents are probably. I don't think be... Myron says things like divine femininity and stuff. So I'm that must come from a different pot. Probably. But, like, those women aren't going to be giving these answers. They're going to be giving <laughs> way meaner answers about men, probably. <laughs> right? Like, if you listen to Cynthia G, like, you would come here saying, like, you hope the cops show up and kill every black man in the room. Right? If you were, like, listening to, like, the opposite of this, I guess, at least in black communities. And so. <laughs> but I think a lot of these girls have already been on Fresh and Fit. I think, didn't like over half of them raise their hand, I think. But. So you agree, so real quick, uh, so you agree that we have a lot of distractions that like kind of take women, women out of the mindset that they need to be to be the best girlfriend? Yes. Fair enough. Okay, keep going. I feel as though it's like, like you think these girls are red pilled and not just Tradcon, is my point? No, they're red pilled. Nobody here is Tradcon. Not a single person in this entire room is Tradcon. Did they already ask if they'd be okay with their boyfriend having multiple girlfriends? No. Okay. I don't know. They I feel like that. that'd be like the distinguishing factor. Maybe. No, I feel as though as long as I'm loving you in the way that you feel loved and respected, then you're good. Oh, maybe the one god girl might be Tricon. As long as you're loving me in the way that I feel loved and respected, then we're good. It's not a matter as who loves more who. That, that, not to me. So. I mean, like, here's the thing: with any relationship, one party always has to care more than the other. Why? So, why did why did why does he get to just say things like that? Nobody tells like why, why does somebody have to care more than the other? I mean, unless you're talking about like a hyper discreet like if we were to quantitize the exact level of care, it's never going to be the exact that's, same on both sides. I side. thought that's what he meant. No, no, that's not what he means though. He means that there has to be like a dis like a massively different amount of care from one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest here. Which, who has to care more for it to work, the a man woman. or the woman? A woman, because it takes more out of a woman to show that. Okay, thank you. Next. I could see both sides, but I would say that a woman, a woman should love the man more, especially in the beginning, because if you have a dude that's like straight simping over you, it's definitely a turn off. But later on, the simping could be good if you're in a relationship and everything. But definitely the woman, because women are going to get turned off by a man who's too eager and emotional. Mm. What do people tell you look like, by the way? Christina Ritchie. Christina, okay. And um, what's that other girl? Kind of get some Lana Del Rey vibes, but anyway, yeah, moving on. Yeah, Billie Eilish, Lana Del Rey. Oh, I get like okay. everything, but mainly um, Christina Ritchie. Okay. So, <laughs> thank, thank you, though. You're welcome. I see Billie with the highlights. <laughs> no, I'm not hitting on the girl. I just <laughs> maybe I am. You never know. 
I definitely need to love harder, love more than the male in my relationships. Okay. If I love my man more, I'll be able to put my all into it and make him happy. So the woman should love more. I need to be in love more. Uh, the lawyer, the lawyer. Well, according to Tort 47, uh, the law school that I'm in right now, love is actually it's peripheral. Equal, it's anyway, go ahead. She's an attorney. Well, I was gonna say that women love more, but I was after Myron. You just worded it saying who cares more, and I think this whole entire night we've been talking about how men are the leaders and men are the ones that take care of and provide and this and that. So shouldn't men love more? I'm just because I know no. you guys. I know. No. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. If men are if men are putting their ass on the line and they're gonna protect us and they're gonna be like if it's a dangerous situation or you're gonna you know put the family first and stuff, shouldn't you guys love more? If we're yeah, opportunists, exactly. <laughs> That, what Zerga just said there was the perfect counter earlier though to the vulnerability thing, right? Like if men are doing everything, all you need to do is love. Like, wouldn't that be the answer to the vulnerability question? Like, listen, if I'm providing for you, if I'm protecting for you, if you don't have any fucking job in the world, can't the one thing I ask from you be compassion for if I'm emotionally vulnerable? Like, couldn't you make the same argument? No, because he's saying being vulnerable undermines those other ambitions. Like, but it doesn't, it doesn't provide have security. To. No, they're not saying it undermines it. They're saying it makes the woman feel like it undermines no, it. No, he said both. He's like, how am I going to protect you if I'm crying and someone breaks in the door? Because they think of these, it's like, retarded. very extreme situations. I guess that's fucking retarded. Yeah. I, think this, I think it undermines her point. <laughs> All right, so if women, if women are opportunists and men are idealists, then men technically love more. That's also true too, because he says that though he, he used that term often that like women are opportunistic and men are idealistic or whatever. So like, doesn't that? But mean his I mean? philosophy is a counter to those natural instincts. I think that's his point. Well, should but then I would say should and could and would are dangerous words, and I only talk about what is. Mm. No, I, I disagree with that because you're even a guy that doesn't know you that doesn't have any type of allegiance to you, will st still show you some level of chivalry or damn near being a simp without you doing anything for it. So that's the man that's gonna put me and my family first? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that since, we, okay, let me ask you this. Who appreciates being simped on more, men or women? I think men. That is such a freaking good question, by the way. Because, and, and I'm going somewhere with that. If you get something all the time, it has no value, okay? The reason why the woman needs to care more is because we're already operating from a deficit as a man. You're already getting simps hitting you up. You're already getting, you know, opportunities. You're already getting guys willing to spend money on you, protect and provide for you love. for nothing more. Hold on, but the, the point is, is that women don't appreciate chivalry anymore, which is why I said chivalry is dead. So to overcorrect, I get like civil chivalry is not simping. Like it's so cringe to conflate the two. Like you can be chivalrous to somebody without simping for them. I think they're defining simping by like spending and expending energy on women for nothing in return and then they're probably defining chivalry by like paying for dates and doing nice things with no expectation return i feel like that's why they see them as the same right i guess but then you're just being retarded you're like redefining a way isn't like, that the definition of simping and chivalry or not chivalry but the definition i think of chivalry is being honorable and like with integrity you do things for especially women because you're being kind out of the generosity of your heart without expecting anything in return simping is like being obsessive clingy giving everything you can in the hopes of getting something in return and you have like no guarantees or whatever that's like a simp it's like a loser that's just like a clingy fucking guy that's giving you whatever you possibly can in order to get something from you right i think that's my for this crazy discrepancy in 2023, the woman must care more about the man because quite frankly, I hate to say it like this, women are terrible people when they have leverage. They don't appreciate things because they're given everything for simply existing. And I don't blame you guys for it. If I was 18 years old, having bad chicks willing to fly me out to LA to hang out with them or being invited on yacht rides or being invited to Dubai, whatever, for nothing more than the fact that I have a penis, I'd be a piece of shit too. But since I understand this, I know that men, right, need to be in a position where the girl likes it more to overcorrect for all the things that men have, for all the discrepancies I just mentioned, the, the severe deficit in the dating marketplace. Because you get all the things I mentioned just now for free. So women don't appreciate simps, but men do. That's why. You're gonna get good treatment if you sip on your man, but he's not gonna get good treatment if he sips on you. I guess I don't even know what, I guess I don't know what definition he's gonna because whatever he's saying now is not like, does simp just mean like does things for people? Like how he's using it? I truly don't know. I think he considers like the default relationship structure simping because like his whole motto is like simp to pimp. So he's like, we're transforming men from simps to pimps. But I thought that's because their initial men are like only fans losers. Not to, not I feel like they, but that's what they consider a simp. A simp is like, like a guy that's a, on. They use a broader pool. Oh okay, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> let, let me let me just if, if i can just give a quick very tangible example um all three of us had to put in years of work thousands of video millions of dollars we've all made just for the chance for the three of us to be on the stage hosting a show and being special guests what have you guys done to be on the show that's i hate when they use that argument because like that's the structure of their that's show that their fault that yeah. like do you think that women that are pretty get on fucking oprah 
Mm, yeah. Like if you go to a real show or a fuck, actually fuck Oprah, fuck any late night show, mm -hmm. any TV show, it, like that's their fault. They choose a show where they literally go to Instagram, they grab 30 random fucking women and throw them on a show and like, <laughs> you didn't candy, have to, yeah. yeah, that's called a self report. Like, yeah, these women might not have been doing anything. That reflects more on you than on them. Like, you you're the also, simp there. Yeah, you could also counter and be like, okay, if your show is representative of society, then the fact that, like, they take away the female's phones, that they yell at them, that they can kick them out whenever shows that, like, mm -hmm. we're in a patriarchy. Like, if they want to say that their show is representative, you yeah. know what I mean, of larger society. It's so, this is such a stupid question. Yeah. It, in any other circumstance, it would be so dumb. Like, imagine if we did a podcast... And we only invited like black felons. And I would ask a question like this, like, why are you guys here? You're only here because you guys broke the fucking law because you're the trash. Like, it's such yeah. a, in any other circumstances, people would obviously say like, okay, host, that's a really bad question for you. But for some reason here, they think it like proves a point. It's such a bizarro fucking question. Do you think like, they think that's the case for most podcasts? Obviously that's the case for like red pill podcasts, like whatever and stuff. But do you think they just think that's the case for media in general, that it's just easier for women? Pr yeah, probably. And there's, there's, here's the rule that I found for YouTube and Twitch, and I bet it's the exact, actually, I'll say it for sure, it's the exact same with podcasting. If you're a woman, you can have a slightly easier time getting your foot in the door if you're really attractive, but you will never sustain an audience doing that ever. There is no woman that's successful on YouTube or on Twitch or on, probably in the podcasting world, that's just hot. You have, like, maybe you get a few views initially, but if you're not entertaining, you lose it all, like, immediately. And I've seen streamer after streamer after streamer after streamer after streamer on Twitch. We could probably go to the Twitch hot tub category right now and find a bunch of, like, 9 out of 10 hot fucking girls that have, like, 20 viewers because they're just not very entertaining to look at. Mm. <clears throat> people, are, yeah, like, people in chat, because you guys are fucking retarded because you have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to entertainment or anything. People that are putting Amaranth, you guys are fucking retards. Regardless of what you feel about Amaranth, and I, I fucking hate Amaranth, uh, she works insanely fucking hard to do what she does and she does she runs fucking reruns, reruns like crazy she does her like fucking unbanned shit she like push the fucking bathtub and all that fucking shit crazy streaming hard she does like fucking live events she manages like 15 platforms she's got like 10 fucking employees like amaranth works harder than any fucking other cam girl you've ever seen in your entire fucking life um so you can say like oh amaranth's only there because she's pretty but amaranth busts her ass to do her content probably better than almost there's a reason why she's the number one fucking girl on only fans all right <clears throat> What did I guys, see? Yeah, all we had to do was to get you amazing girls on the show. Was say, hey, we're doing a show. Uh, we need a bunch of girls. We got 50 women to say yes. Yeah, that's what and I was we gonna say. You were talking about entertainment value, not like work ethic. Yeah, I think that to be entertaining, I think you have to work at it. I think. Well, I mean, unless you're like naturally entertaining, but like it's not just going to be. All the things be... you list about Amrit, I don't know anything about her content, but like you were just talking about like reruns and employees and stuff. Like I don't know what that has to do with anything. She works hard to have the position she's at. She's not just a hot girl that shows up. She's put a lot of work into her content. Like there are women that are hotter than Amaranth that didn't make it as far as Amaranth. Mm. I think. Twenty of you, and thank you guys for being here. But the qualifications and the standards to get on this Lower. fucking stage are very, Lower. very high. Yeah, like you set the qualifications and standards. Like that's yeah. a self-report. Hide if you're the dude, and not very so high low. if you're the female. I'm sorry to say. What? Well, no one wants to admit this, but it's when. Uh, it's not a single girl. But it's bring also because the structure they shows to like uh, educate these women. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. In 23 women live life on easy mode because women are able to simultaneously like if we did a blue pill fucking show and we invited like guys from college like we could literally say this question like the only reason you're on this thing is because you're a male that goes to college that's the only reason you got invited we put out the call and you showed up but it was just, it's such a stupid point fuck i hate this point so much honestly double dip and act like a lady and get certain privileges be treated like a lady while also being able to be in their masculine and chase a career etc and, and i'll take it a step further if they do decide to chase that career a masculine one at that they have an inherent advantage. You know, I saw that interview that you had with those two FBI agents. This is true. If you work in a masculine dominated field, women are promoted at a higher level, especially yep. in male dominated fields. Like we have affirmative action here and women have all the same rights and privileges that men do while having female privileges that men will never enjoy. So the reality is life is easier for women in 2023. Is there a reason why a woman can make a million dollars on OnlyFans when there's 1.47 million women? Because men give it to them. Because men give it to them. I don't know why her mic is gonna cut. But like this thing too, there's a reason why women make millions on OnlyFans. Okay, but like if you go to the top like 1,000 YouTubers, my guess is is like 800 of them are probably men. I think for the top 100 Twitch streamers, I think like 98 of them were men. But her point is she's just getting, uh, she's saying the OF girls just bank on their gender versus the YouTubers aren't getting views because they're men. Um, yeah, sure, that's true. But I, I mean like in, in the places where people like are putting an effort and shit, like they're massively male dominated. And it's not like every girl is like a fucking millionaire on OnlyFans, right? Like you're still like selected for like a really... Like, I don't think every girl in life could just skirt by on her looks. Like, there might be some that could do it on OnlyFans, but even the ones that are t t top earning on OnlyFans are probably working pretty hard at it, be my guess. They're not just selling loads or whatever. Mm -hmm. Work very hard to get where you are. 
She had something in the back. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Someone no. was trying to say something in the back. I, yeah, I just think please. like you say, well, women don't have to do anything to get this opportunity to be on the stage, but I think it's because you successful men are giving us those opportunities. Thank you. Good job, Tony. You men are sexualizing us, and want the, you want us in the clubs. You want us at your table. You want us here, so we're here. So. That's awesome. And thank thing. you for being here. And, and exactly. here's the thing: we're not we're not insulting you for taking the opportunity. I'm simply acknowledging that the opportunity exists. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah, right. yeah. And by the way, how many female podcasts do you see? Three females and thirty dudes up on stage being like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm out here, just a dude looking to have an opportunity." <laughs> yeah. You don't see it. Start that. Thing too. Adam, I don't know if you noticed it, right? Because yeah. what you just said was, you're, "The men are the ones inviting us and giving us these opportunities, etc." I always say on the show, privilege is invisible to those that have it. She Perfect. said that, that. knowing, Perfect. right? Like she didn't, it didn't even come to her mind that I'm getting these privileges because I'm a woman. She went ahead and said it anyway. It, it actually made your argument weaker. But, but he's, she's only getting the privileges because he's making that choice. Like you could just as easily do a show where you bring like three like decently successful women in the entertainment field and like talk to them. No, but you just said even in other industries, women could get their foot in the door for being attractive. Like you're affirming his point. No. Like that, you're saying it's just specific to these panels. Sure, I'm saying that in some industries you can get your foot in the door easier, but you're, you'll crash and burn too. Like these industries are still probably in the hole. OnlyFans probably doesn't, but OnlyFans but doesn't. But even getting your foot in the door is a privilege, I think. Oh, in a way, but like audiences are privileged as well, right? Like when you go on like YouTube and Twitch, like the audience is massively skew male. So as a man, you tend to have like more success there, right? Now women can get in the door easier because they, again, because like you get you like- You don't think that favors women, a more male audience? No. Okay. I don't think so. A more male audience. I think that if you do sexualized content, it can. That's why I'm saying for OnlyFans, it's mm -hmm. like the opposite thing at play. But if you want to be taken serious as a woman doing anything else, like how many Twitch streamers are fucking women where guys are in their chats and like, hey, when are you doing OnlyFans? Or like, hey, do you have nudes? Or hey, blah, 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 blah. Like if you want to be taken serious as a woman outside of like sexual content, you have to put in like really, really, really explicit, difficult work to do that, I think. Um, because the men being like massively male, uh, it makes it a little bit harder, I think, sometimes for women to succeed in these areas. Not impossible, but... And women do have some advantages, like getting in front of the door is like somewhat of an advantage, but. Yeah. Women don't see it because privilege is invisible to them because it's so common. That's why I tell y'all, women live life on easy mode. So the only thing that they're gonna respect is when they actually have to work for something. And that needs to be your validation, your attention, and your time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of using us as decoration, you know? Decoration. It's like a that's still, that's still, more not, opportunity for no, no, you no, no, too, you know? Not really. I didn't know there would be this many women and I didn't, wouldn't have enough time to like That proves my, my point that there's many of you, but one of me. Right. So it's also that's like, what I'm trying to say, like the things that make well, opportunity is like a thousand women on the panel and they each get like two seconds of speaking time before they're like yelled at by these three hosts. Sure, yeah. Yeah. A woman attractive are extremely common. But maybe a, maybe a woman that had a podcast would choose the same amount of men oh, so that men could, could really speak just I've as much as this. women. All the top podcasts, male dominated. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not saying that women are doing more podcasts. No, but I'm just saying, and, and here's the thing, when women do have podcasts, I mean, what, so, you can think of like one successful one, one, they might bring a guy on here and there, but yeah. they're not bringing random guys. The guys have to have status to be able to come on. Yeah. Yeah. But so yeah. what's your point? Free advice for the ladies out there. Start a podcast, start, start a podcast, and invite a bunch of random dudes on and see how many dudes just show up to your podcast. You should start it. But that's like just with Red Pill. Like, I don't think Joe Rogan is bringing like random girls who don't provide value. Like the yeah, bigger correct. podcasts, Lex Friedman, these ones, they're bringing on girls who bring probably like equal value to the guys, right? Yeah, for sure. Like if you look at Lex Friedman's thing, it's not gonna be like random 22 year old, oh, like bottle girls. service yeah. girl or whatever, right? Yeah. Again, oh, it's oh, coming out that works out for you. I'm getting a red pill right now. Yeah. Like the girls are saying things that quite literally prove what we're saying that women have privilege. Yeah. And they don't even realize that what you're saying is privileged. You're saying, yeah. well, we're here for decoration. Yeah, yes. Yeah. In other words, you don't have to bring value to be here. Yo, yeah. do you know? Yeah. Uh, like, like, am, I, am I the only person that sees this? Now, now what yeah, I will like, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. what, what yeah. I will say is, is this, is that when you show up mm. as quote unquote decoration, how you handle yourself is, is a very true testament to what you, like for instance, Janelle's had some amazing answers. Melina, very opinionated. I don't know how the audience feels about uh, Melina, but she, the girl in the blue, amazing answers. This girl over here, like how you handle yourself accordingly like will dictate your value beyond just being eye candy. Too yeah. much is yeah. given, much is required. So, and if so, I feel like a decoration- Real quick, real quick. What's your name? Louis. Louis, I guarantee you, right? If you had a chance to sit right here, would you? See, he wants to sit here, but he's not here. Why? He's not a woman. So for you, you should be glad to be here. Right. Opportunity. That's oh, yeah, it. So does that yeah. happen? Yeah. Yeah. I love him. So, you know, men have to work far harder to get certain things that women get for free. That's just the reality. Women don't get boats and put a bunch of 18-year-old dudes on there. <laughs> men work really hard for 18 years. But women, the women on the panel here don't have the same opportunities as the men on the panel either, right? Wait, what do you mean? Like the men on the panel are, this is the fresh and fit podcast. It's not yeah, the fresh and fit more. and ladies. Yeah, like these, and they have the careers and they make all the money and they've got the YouTube channel. Or like if anything, they're monetizing like the women's privilege here, mm -hmm. right? Like the women do have the privilege to get invited to the show, but the privilege is so that the men could monetize. None yeah. of the women here are getting paid to do this. Yeah. Years okay. to be able to purchase the boat so that the 18 year old girls want to come, the 19 year old girls want to come, etc. The 21 year olds, whatever it is, right? right? Men have to bring value to get attention or even be seen by women, but women don't have to bring value on the other end. And here's another thing too, there's a saying, uh, someone here could probably help me with this one in Spanish. The quieter you are, the more beautiful you are, right? Oh, somebody got it? Angie got it. Angie got it. Angie, say it really loud for the audience. 
There you go. Now they're gonna be quiet after that. Claro. <laughs> but the, the thing is, this guy fucking Claro. But the thing is, right? Why is it that that's a universal saying in all the different Latin countries? Why is it that, you know, men like quiet women? So you disagree with them and think going on F and F does not benefit them? No. Going on Fresh and Fit, a lot of the girls, I don't know why, but girls that have social media think that when they go on these platforms is going to benefit them, but in general, it doesn't really that much. You, you know, maybe you get a couple thousand people on your Instagram, maybe if you're lucky, if you have like a stand-up performance, but like most of the girls that go on these shows don't even say much. Like if we look at this show here, like- But what? that's on them. Sure, that's fine, but I'm just saying that most of them. Like, and not on this one. This one's not on them. But I'm saying on whatever, or like Fresh and Fit. That I feel like. Yeah, it but gives I know. But even on those shows, like half the girls like don't even talk. But we're talking about opportunity, not how they use it. Sure, but like even on opportunity, opportunity like has there ever been a person that has been like spun off of like Fresh and Fit that's like gotten their own show or something? That's again about seizing the opportunity, not about whether they could. Sure, but Same I'm just way Zerka asking. used his opportunity well, and I wouldn't be surprised if he got a ton of. Uh, yeah, but Zerka's not. He didn't make himself offers. on Fresh and Fit. He was made before he got to Fresh and Fit. But even if he didn't, if he came in with that energy, you could say he made himself on like No Jumper, or I know he was already famous like years ago or something. But yeah. Um, wait. What is the point? Where are we at right here? My point is like, didn't Zerka have an equal opportunity in theory to like make his career on Fresh and Fit than like the girl sitting next to him? I don't think so because I think when men are brought on the shows, they're brought as like people of interest that you're supposed to be interested in. Like Zerka gets his own show. Like the men get their own show before like the nine women are brought on, and then you're like one of nine. Like it's possible to have a stand-up performance, but like that's a way more treacherous skill yeah. to navigate than the men True. who are brought there. And I guess like, Myron would cut them off if they talk too much. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Tried to act like Zerka, like put on a performance. They yeah. probably, yeah, you probably boot them. Right, we've been saying that for years, whatever. Because women aren't valued on their opinions. No, it's because you can't take pushback. Oh, bro. How many times Ooh, has Adam called him Sean because he doesn't like the pushback? Why is he not here because you don't no. like the pushback? It's, it's oh, not like no, that. Don't bring my name up, Melina. Oh, no. Oh, Melina. I don't think she can cook. Oh, I don't think she can cook. What? <laughs> Wait, why? I just don't like when people invoke me when I'm not there because then I get shit gets said in my name or against me or for me, and I just like it's. I just rather control my own reputation. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that, buddy. I don't know about all that. I'm not co-signing on that tape. You guys love the young ones who try to drop them. The thing you don't understand is that pushing back is an inherently masculine trait, which is cool if you want to make money and be assertive and be dominant. But most guys aren't gay, so they don't want to take themselves. They want the opposites. What would you would you like it if I showed up on Saturdays and wore heels? Sure, why not? That's because she tagged her husband. Melania should have said no here too. That was a way too big a bullet to bite. There's no reason to do that. It answers well, itself. Women, so okay, we have one girl. Listen, listen, make, listen, make, listen. Uh, we have one girl that wants to make an opinion. Melina, you've spoken more than any girl on the stage by fucking I've been quiet for like an okay. hour here. And that's why everyone's having a great time. Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure Melina has been quiet. Is he like, always this much of a douche, or is he riled by FNF right now? Uh, he's pretty aggressive towards Molina, but that's because Molina talks a lot. But it's because a lot of the other girls won't say anything, so it's like it's just like a weird dynamic. I think I think he just wants less pushback from the women. I think in general. <laughs> yeah, I guess she disagrees with a lot of what he says, right? But he's like he he does cut her up and interrupt her a lot. I think it's pretty. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So right. the heels thing, you were trying to respond to. That. I said, would you want a guy that would like? If I she said yes. Pushback and heels is yes. the same thing, is it? I don't think that's what it is. If I say that I want someone to push me, like in conversation, to push me as a person or challenge me, that's different from like someone showing up at heels. Well, Wait. here's the thing. If okay, that's a better answer. You have to push your man, you lost. No. You're not a man. Because, because you can help each other out. That's clearly something that, of course you can. No. Of course when, you can. If a girl has to push her man, see the thing with men is that it needs to be inherent in you to want to work hard. You need to be self-driven. That's your job as a man. Yeah. Okay? If my girl needs to push me to become better, then why I'm is just that a bitch. Why is that you can only push him like, for so need, long. I'm not saying that you need to be a complete mess. I can't do anything. But like some sort of motivation. You want to do the There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. Right? This is, this like, is my I want point. someone to push me. I use that analogy. Let me, let me explain what I mean by that. I use an analogy of heels that flew right over your head. The reason why I asked you that question is would you accept me if I wore heels? If you're you're saying yes to be funny. You would not accept a feminine man, so why should I accept a masculine woman that wants to push back on me? I think that you can be. I think you admitting that you're wrong and stepping down and trying to learn from your mistakes is a feminine trait because you need to be submissive in the form to like keep going. Because you're stepping down. You're admitting to being a failure because you can I don't no. The heels thing is interesting. I guess that's what I was kind of saying with the emotions and the crying thing is like you have to hyper control it. So it's like you don't necessarily need to dress like an alpha, like Justin Waller and wear a suit all the time. But you can't explore too much because, again, if you do wear heels, odds are girls are going to be attracted to you. But for girls, you can go all the way masculine, like wear suits. And for the most part, people aren't going to be unattracted to you unless they're like super, super trad con. I don't like that example. There, women have a w much wider deference in terms of like fashion than men do. That's my whole point. But I don't think that women in a suit are considered masculine. Like, my point women is, can women wear can suits. do anything, and it won't affect their attractiveness, whether they cry a little bit, whether they wear sneakers or these. But I'm saying men, I'm saying they're probably less inclined to explore themselves emotionally and aesthetically, because if they make a misstep, if they wear heels, if they actually explore too much in fashion, and they realize, like, oh, I like heels, I wear, like, like wearing jewelry, 
Maybe it has to be well, drawn in a very I, no, specific no, I, way. I, I, here, here, uh, here's a better example. I don't like the suit thing because women can wear suits and look really sexy. Men and women think they look sexy. A more apt comparison would be a woman showing up to a first date with no makeup. She'll get eviscerated by like 95% of guys on the planet, depending on what she looks like. I don't know. Absolutely. Look at the, half the women on this. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. If you think a woman not wearing makeup on a first date is at all like comparable to a guy wearing heels in terms of I didn't the say, way hold on, no, 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 don't no, straw, no, 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 don't straw man me. I didn't say it was comparable. A guy wearing heels, that's like an unbelievably fucking crazy other thing. But an average woman not wearing makeup on like a date or whatever would be a, would be way outside the norms in the United States. I'm not saying it would be the same as like wearing said, high heels. You said as a guy. eviscerated. Yeah, she, yes. That's would, different than out of the norm. She would be eviscerated because it's wildly out of the norm, but not as much as like wearing high heels. As if a, guy. a girl went on a date with a guy and he showed up in heels, unless she's like a liberal New Yorker girl and like super chill and okay with like androgynous fashion, I sadly I think the average girl would go and make fun of him to her friends. I don't think the average guy would go home and be like, this girl didn't wear makeup. Maybe, Absolutely. Maybe he'd be like, oh, this girl wasn't as attractive as her pictures if she wore makeup in the pictures, but he's not going to be like, this dumb bitch like wore, didn't wear lipstick or didn't wear mascara. Like, that's not a thing. Absolutely it is. He would say she looked fucking gross. She like didn't even fucking try. Dude, Donovan has a fucking video about how like you should put on lipstick and makeup and shit just to work around the house. That but it was like an insult Tradcon, not to. No, right? he's not Tricon. He's Red Pill. But I'm just Whatever. saying that like the there is a massive expectation for women to all oh, even women that just are around the house will put makeup on like it is like it is, like look at half the women on this fucking panel have surgery to like like to make they, their lips look bigger or to fill in their cheeks or whatever. But like, that Miami's a specific subculture. A lot of guys like especially in like Colorado certain areas like the norm is girls walk around wearing without makeup. Like I was I in super Boulder don't last week you. and that's I the vibe. Super don't. I've never Go been to, in a U.S. My citizen. Brother. He lives in Boulder. Like the girls there don't wear makeup. That's like just the subculture because they're really into like hiking and skiing and stuff. So like in general you go out and you go I, on I dates double, everyone's wearing flannels no makeup no shot i super don't believe you but we'll okay. go sometime we'll go there at some point and, yeah. I, and we'll take pictures or whatever but <clears throat> Right. She that's a feminine trait. Because, that's a feminine I mean, trait. Honest, I would she say, pegs her husband. I would absolutely call it that way. And, and having someone, and having someone <laughs> tell you that you're wrong Why is you going to, to motivate you to, to the women, truth. Bro. Like, calm right? down, put your yeah, dick away. Okay. 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 Listen, guys, oh, guys, I would love to do this Melina thing for another 10 hours. We have to wrap up in 15 minutes. We have to wrap up in 15 minutes. I want to get one more thing and I want to get some super chats. We have one girl that wants to make a statement. I said I would. Do that. We'll move on to the last topic. Thank you. All I want to say is that modern women right now are having a victim of a mentality, a mentality that is foreign towards entitlement, towards disrespecting men primarily. And I'm saying this as someone who was this born girl's in not Colombia, who came here makeup, if any. Differences? Uh, maybe. I can't tell on camera. I don't know how much foundation you, she has. Like, I'm saying she's not going to get eviscerated. Um... I, I can't I can't tell how much she's wearing on camera. I mean, she oh. obviously she doesn't have like the eyeliner everything on, but like I'm guessing she probably has some kind oh, of foundation on. But it'd be my guess. Maybe like a tint, but like I can't oh, see anything other than that. I'll okay. use half shifted towards disrespecting, towards treating you guys incorrectly, and at the same time compromising who we are as women because we have to take care of ourselves. We have to value ourselves, and we shouldn't be giving ourselves just to anyone. So that's all I gotta say. Value yourself. Love wow, hi. Love yourself so that we can have a better future. Respect. Okay. All right. Um, so last thoughts. Well, we, 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 got, we got one more clip. So we talked about, this whole thing talked about love and, you know, finding love. And then, you know, after love comes, some may say We're marriage. You. Love yeah. and marriage and the baby chairs, that whole thing. So uh, yeah. last time you guys were on my show, we talked about what a man should do, what things a, a man must accomplish before he considers getting married. We had that whole conversation. And, uh, of course, Ben Shapiro got wind of it and weighed in on it. Now, Ben Shapiro... And I, although both being Jewish, could have not have any more different lifestyles as it possibly is. Yeah, boys in the house. And boys, yeah, boys. boys are here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he weighed in on uh, your thoughts on marriage. Yeah. Um, and I'm more on the Myron School of Things than the Ben Shapiro School of Things. So we have this clip teed up. Go ahead. So, no. Today's day and age, you shouldn't be getting married until you're at least 35. That was my married. next question for you. As a, yeah. as a man, what age what should you women? consider getting married? So I have, th this is my thing that I tell guys here. I think 35 years old, had slept with at least 50 women, 100K per year, you're in shape. And uh, you got six months and one year of savings. All right, done. I got to get married. I've done all that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not easy. Here's the Republic right there. So that is a recipe for a terrible marriage, by the way, guys. Waiting until you're 35 and slept with 50 women. That is a terrible recipe for marriage by every available data point. It turns out that you are much better in terms of getting married if you get married younger, if you do not have a wide variety of sexual partners. For women, about, you know, being in shape and having money and all the rest. Of, like, you should try to do that, generally speaking. But this notion that you wait until you're 35, you've already made a bevy of mistakes that have shaped your character and made you much more rigid as a person. And that you should have had a basis of comparison in terms of sex of dozens and dozens and dozens of women. No, the data do not support this, and it's stupid. I say, okay. What a beautiful man. Why couldn't you be fans of this guy instead of Ethan or Hassan? I know. You should go to sleep listening to Benny Boy. He's just so much better. I used to have a huge crush on him like six years ago. You should still have a huge crush on him. It would be a better choice. Yeah. So, um, how many people agree with Ben Shapiro on this, by the way? 
Okay. How many people agree with myself and my- It's a funny facts over feeling thing too, because what Ben is saying is inarguably correct. Like having multiple partners is negatively correlated with men's relationship success and women's relationship success. Um, and the idea of like waiting till you're 35 or whatever, like none of these things are correlated with like successful marriages or whatever. So this is like the ultimate like feelings over facts that the whole like mm -hmm. male driven yeah. audience is giving. Like, Iron on this. Yeah! All right. and, and here's the thing. Yeah. I, I know some people are gonna say, you're just making and co coping, trying to find a way to have sex with a bunch of girls. So let me ask the ladies a question. Average 25 year old woman went to college. Oh, it's gonna be the, is it gonna be the body count question? Do you care how the body count of your guy? Is that where we're at? Do you think? Go, wait, do the left arrow. Dozens and dozens and dozens of women. No, they didn't. Okay, how many people agree with myself and Myron on this? Yeah! All right. and, and here's the thing, yeah. I, I know some people are gonna say you're just making and co coping, trying to find a way to have sex with a bunch of girls. So let me ask the ladies a question. What do you think he's gonna ask? Yes. Do you want a guy that's more sexually experienced? The guy that's been around the Would block a little bit? Would you date a virgin, yeah. Versus like, yeah, 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 that's my guess. Are you gonna it's be gonna attracted be to a guy with a zero body count? Something about body count, that's my guess, we'll yeah. see. Average 25 year old woman went to college in the United States, okay? What do you think the average body count is? I'm not talking about you. Mm -hmm. no. I'm talking about your peers or women that you know, not you. Oh, do you know what the answer to this is? 25 year old college in the United States average body count for a woman I don't know I think it's around four to five is what the data says he's gonna say it's like 30 but we'll see because he's gonna say like then you multiply it by like three so or something yeah. okay on average what do you think it is we'll start right here and then work our way on average um, I think 25 it's year old girl went to college has a job this dumb fuck lady is about to say like 40 or 50 it's um tw in that 20 to 50 range somewhere okay. is it more if you go to college yeah, probably because they think that women going to college are fucking all the chads constantly and probably getting flown to Dubai constantly. Yeah. Not. Well, 20 to 50. 50 is such an unimaginably, that answer should automatically disqualify you from ever having these conversations ever for the rest of your life. What a fucking, an average 22 year old has a 50 body count. That means that from 16 to 22, you're fucking like 10 guys a year. Fuck 10 guys your junior year of high school. Phrasing Fuck 10 it like guys. that doesn't make it sound that. It act crazy. Like less than one guy a month? That doesn't sound insane. In college? Okay. Um, For a woman? Smiley face. That's insane. For a woman? Yes. If you're not in a relationship? Yes. And you're in college, part of the yes. culture? Yes. W fucking a new guy every single month? If you're like an ultra promiscuous person, then no. But for an, a an average girl is not going to a bar or a club and picking up a new guy like every month. That's a super high body count. I don't know, maybe my for friends an in average college were whores. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, okay. I guess maybe a lot more people believe this than <laughs> don't. I guess. Bodies? Yeah. yeah. What about you? I would say the same because I just looked this up. Twenty to fifty? Yeah, I would say the same because the people I surrounded myself with. What about you? The question is, an average twenty-five year old average woman. Average twenty-five year old woman. How many college? sexual partners do you think they have by the time they're? I'm sorry. Twenty-five. Even at twenty-five, fifty is unimaginably high number. I think the lifetime average partners for a woman is like it's between like seven and eleven. Twenty-five years old. 25 and that went to college. That went to college. It does. It was to keep it simple, right? Average average woman okay. can say didn't go to college. Whatever. Twenty-five year old woman in America. Twenty-five year old girl in the United States. This could go based off your peers. You're saying twenty plus. Been around. You're saying twenty plus. She said thirty to fifty. I said twenty to fifty. Wow. I gotta hear these answers. Go ahead. Well, um, from three to ten. Three okay. to ten. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. No, I would say ten. Ten. Okay. Three to ten is probably. Three to ten. Okay. Seven. Seven. Yeah, I'd say the average about ten. Ladies, one more time. This is not you. I'm yeah. talking about your peers, girls you know. Wait, like pause. Right? You said the answer was what? Two I think it's like probably four or five would be my guess. Because the lifetime average sexual partners is, I've seen any reported between seven and 11. So by the time you're 25, you're probably five. Doesn't that feel low? Because that's like one per year in college. I guess maybe a lot of people, what percent of people are in relationships in college? Because then that would make more sense. But if you're not in relationships, I'd expect it to be a lot higher than one a month. Or not one a month, but at least more than one a year. Because people just aren't typically going in and fucking a ton of people. Like that's just not like a normal... Like most people just don't. Most people are doing. Like, um, how many how many, do how many places do you think? One a year is a How many ton. places do you think people live in their entire lives? How many different houses or apartments? Um. Like, how many times will a person move in their entire life? Do you think? I'm guessing not a lot, but that's kind of different because you need like capital. I'm sure, I'm just asking. What do you think the number is? I don't know. Take a guess. I don't know. You're not even gonna venture a guess. The guess would just be me saying a number that has no basis in what I think. I don't know. I okay, but like don't fucking know. a new person every month doesn't seem that insane. But you no, you can't even begin to fathom I'm how saying many at times least, at least more than once a year. So that's why I'm saying maybe the average is really low because maybe a high percentage of people in college are in like long-term relationships. So maybe that's what like lowers the average. Probably a bit maybe, but. So that's what I want to know because the idea of just like the average college girl who's not in a relationship and participating in like casual sex only fucking once a year, like one guy a year, that surprises me a lot. Okay. You don't think so? 
I, I just know what the reported numbers are. But I think a girl fucking, like, different guys. Wait, can we year. look up the college relationships thing? Um, percentage, uh, a, okay. Average, length, college, relationship? I don't even no, know. No, not length. I said, um, what percent of college students are in a relationship? Okay. What percentage of college students are dating? 40% of college students have been in a relationship for six months or longer, with 62% reporting going on at least one date during their time. So that's like almost half. So I feel like that makes more sense then, right? So the people who aren't in relationships, it's probably like more like... Probably a little bit more. Quite a bit more. more. I don't know about quite a bit more, but probably a bit more, sure. Of all the females in your life that you come across or you've known. Yeah, I'm definitely not talking about myself. Okay. <laughs> three to, you said what? Three to ten? Okay. Just say a number, guys. Yeah, 35. this three to ten thing. Is 35. Like 35. 35. 35. 25. 25. I've never even heard a girl admit 20. No one single woman I've ever met in my entire life. We know a girl under exaggerate their numbers, though, right? 10 to 20, probably. Okay. Yes. Okay. Girls on the couch? Uh, sadly, I know women that have had a bad count of over 100. So, yeah. that's average, though, really? Well, we're saying average. I think you're talking average. 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 You think it's 100? Average is 100. So, she said 100? Did she say 100? We can say 80. Shout out to Colombia in the house. What's up? Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about the United States. Yeah, we're talking about, yeah. we're, we're talking about the United States, not, not Colombia, where prostitution is. No, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I went to school here. Yeah. I went to Tulane. Tulane? And I would say Damn. average ballpark, 80. Damn. Okay. All right. What? what? I would say everyone in this house is lying to me. I would say about 20. What about the you? The saddest thing is, I bet by the end of this, not, like, even though they prepared for the topics, they prepared, I wonder if anybody's going to actually like bring out a data point, or if it's just going to be whatever their theory says. How many do you think the average woman? How many? About 20. 20, cool. What about you? Average, I would yeah. say it's safe to say 30. Okay. All right, let's keep going. This? Well, uh, yeah. <clears throat> a number that seems like normal is like probably uh, 40. Okay. 30. 30. Okay. Not, not, not me, not me. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, remember, ladies. <laughs> It's average. Did Amy say she didn't know a woman with less than 20? I thought Amy said she didn't know a woman with 20. I think that's what she said. Like, up to 20. Oh, what about you? But also, somebody with 20 or more partners is in, like, a top... I think it's one percentile of, like, people. I think it's, like, once you get past 12... Or, or it might be 15 or 14, I think. The study that I... Fuck, there was one that I quoted in that Rolodeck you can check, but I think it tracked people for... How many people had 7 plus partners and then, like, 14 plus partners or something like that. But, um... Yeah. Oh, sexual partners by age. I feel like I went to a state college, so that's why I feel like most of my friends had pretty high body counts there, but I feel like maybe at other schools, maybe people are more sexually modest. So I wonder if that's why I thought it was higher. 20, 21, sexual partners. Oh, so this is how many sexual partners they've had all together from age 18 to 25. So 60% of men have had one partner. 43% of women have had one partner. Um... So like the like most of the graph is like right here. I'm saying like state college is more of a party school. It might have, no, but I'm like that to your chat, e but. sure, but like even in state college, like how, like how many people would you even see that aren't going to parties or aren't doing anything? Like they just show up to class and they don't have they don't do any Greek life. They don't go to any like bars. They just like show up to class, study, go back to their dorm. Like, there's probably, like, an invisible, like, majority that do that. that Maybe. You just, like, never see Sunnis anything. are just, like, notorious for partying and stuff. Sure. I wouldn't know what to say, but from the last time I went to school that I socialized with people my age, I would say maybe 20 okay. is the average. Okay. Um, who else? Is there anybody else left? Yeah. So many people that I know have been in their 40s, so. Okay. Yeah, well, anybody else? That chart shows that the average men have two times more partner than the average woman, which is mathematically impossible. Um, I don't know because um, in colleges now, I believe that the numbers are... Uh, it's like 66, it, it's almost two women to one man in college. So that it might actually work out mathematically that at men on average would have twice the body count as women on average in colleges because the numbers are so disproportionate, I think. Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody 21. else? 21. 21, all right. I'm going to say 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 24. 24, okay. <laughs> Maybe like in their 20s. In their 20s, okay. 3 to 10s. 3 to 10, okay. 5 to 20. 20, okay. I would have to say about 30. 30, okay. The average is herpes. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. Now, with a show of hands, ladies, right? Okay, so it seems to me from all of your different answers, let's go ahead and peg it around 20, right? Would it be fair to say 20, 25 no here? Way. From everybody's answers, if I'm gonna go ahead and average it out. So, let's say it's around 20, 25. Let me ask you this. For a relationship to last, who has to be more sexually experienced in a relationship, the man or the woman? Man, 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 man. Okay, raise a hands if you think the man needs to be more sexually experienced for the relationship to work. Raise a hands nice and high, nice and high. I wanna see what, what the thing is. Okay, so that's the majority. Now, just out of curiosity, who thinks the woman needs to be more sexually experienced for the relationship to work? Raise a hands. Nobody? That's why you need to fuck 50 bitches. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, listen, 
<laughs> yeah, I got it. I love how it goes from more experience to fifty. When it's if the average college girl is only fucking two to four people. Yeah. Does not well, just no, mean, no, no, like, no. But they think suffice? they think the average is like thirty or forty. But they didn't. But can't he just correct, or he's just gonna? Yeah, he's just going off that. They have no numbers, point. no stats, okay. no nothing. Yeah, like I said, they're not gonna ever like bring data to this because it destroys yeah. their entire point of view. Would here. you agree? Like the body count's probably higher in like the major cities, like Miami, New York City, LA, and stuff like that, than it is in maybe like the Midwest or. Um, no, I don't. It's I think there's like a whole bunch of like really unintuitive, like. Um, there's a lot of unintuitive things that go into people fucking more or less. So like, here's something that I could see being true. I'm just making this all up, but it could be true, right? That like conservative communities tend to report higher levels of happiness than liberal communities. So a guess I'm gonna have is that like, if you go into the cities, women are probably more likely to be prescribed things like Prozac or antidepressants. And those women are probably less likely to participate in hookup culture than like, conservative people that are happier just want to fuck more but then also conservative people might be more religious and like hook up yeah. less um, but also like in liber- like that's what i'm saying there's like there could be like a ton of different things at play that like are unintuitively pushing the numbers in different directions right it could be that in liberal cities people tend to be a bit more wealthy wealthy people tend to fuck around less um in conservative places people are more bored they can either go tip over cows or fuck each other so they fuck yeah, more there's just but, yeah. pe- less people in general so you could do hookup culture versus in like a smaller town you can't really do hookup culture because you have to see that person well it depends on what we mean by small town like, I don't know what people qualify that as. So, like, for instance, like, I lived in Omaha, like, because it's, it's Nebraska. Is that, like, a small town? It's not. There's, like, a million people in the Omaha metropolitan area. And, like, a lot of people in Nebraska, the state, are going to go to Omaha for college or Lincoln for college, right? Mm-hmm. Or same thing, like, in Florida. A lot of people are going to, like, UC, Florida, whatever, or, like, different state schools or whatever. Um, state schools are going to have a fuck ton of people like yeah. But, I, like I said, I don't know. Like, it could go either way. But I, I wouldn't assume one or the other because there could be, like, some really unintuitive reasons why in some places people fuck way more and in other places they don't. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if there's, like, stuff online about it. Mm-hmm. Wow. People think, people think I'm just easy. over here. People think I'm just over here being a dickhead or being a misogynist, whatever. By their own <laughs> answers. The average girl has a high body count. Uh, by their own accord, the man needs to be sex- more sexually experienced. So... It is what it is. But I'm telling you guys, acclimate to the current sexual marketplace. Bed, right? But we care Can about I just finish my sentence real fast? We're wrapping up. You need to acclimate to the current sexual marketplace. Is UC Florida a school? I fucked it up. You, is it called U? Oh, see, yeah, UC, University of Central Florida. Obviously, that's what I was referring to, guys. Come on. You guys don't know about university. You guys don't know about the University of Central Florida? Come on, guys. Place counts. By the way, if that wasn't a drop the mic moment, I don't yeah. know what was. Okay. Like, like yeah. again, emotional. If that wasn't a drop the mic moment, what was the drop the mic moment? Nobody brought out a single set or data point. Like, this is all emotional. This is like emotionalism, I think, is the word they use. It triggers the fuck out of them. To the current sexual marketplace, guys. By the way, if that wasn't a drop the mic moment, I don't yeah. know what was. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a lot of men care about it, right? A lot of, a lot of men don't care about women being good in bed at all. But women care about men being good in bed. That's the point. That's what I just said. But it's only because men care about the status of women. That's what it is. And the status 19, I actually looked it up before the show. You just gotta focus on what. You want to get? I don't you even want think men men really do like from men. I think it's just nice to say that you fucked a lot of people. That's what it seems like. Only men care about you. Absolutely. Because you- number of sexual partners in lifetime. This is CDC stats for women. These are medians, not mean. So not average, but the middle number. The median for women is four point three. The median for men is six point three. Mm. Like I think that the average number of partners is way, 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 way lower than a lot of people think. Like the like again, you come to these places and people think that like the average woman is fucked her way through like twenty or thirty guys by the time she's twenty five. It's just like such a wildly out there. Wait, sorry, was that lifetime or by a certain age? Um, I think that was by four, age 49. This is oh, okay. oh, partner's age 25 to 49. Cause I was gonna say, isn't the number of relationships higher than that median? Maybe, I'm, maybe I was thinking of mean. Um, yeah, so median is just gonna be the middle yeah, yeah. of a set of ordered data, yeah. The average number of relationships I think was like six or seven or eight. Maybe people don't fucking every, I don't know if they're counting. I wonder if, the, I wonder if in those studies are they counting like a grade school relationship? Like I dated a guy when I was in eighth grade. Is that like boy, I don't know if they do or not. Hmm. You would rather pick Adam, a girl. Don't you and your husband fight with no show. sexual Openly experience really? at all. Oh, sure. right. Look, it's, it's very simple. Eric, since the beginning of time, men have preferred versions. Andres. I don't it's make the rules. Kind of boring, isn't it? No, what that means is that men prefer women. That, that means you don't like sex. Like you sex. don't like sex in that case. You only like the status of having sex with a lot of people. No, you can train her. If you, she's a virgin, she's clearly not going to be that good, right? But that's your job as a man to do what I said at the top of the show, coach her. But why? This isn't a winning point because these guys don't care about sex, and they will proudly say that. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Why don't you just have someone that's already good in bed? Why would you want someone that is like a fucking 10 out of 10 at blowjobs? Why wouldn't you pick that instead? I mean, you got 100 plus men telling you here that they prefer women to have yeah, more body counts. 100 plus men and like 50 of them, I think, are virgins. How many of them said that they were single right now? Didn't like 90% of the audience raise their hand? Half. Oh. <laughs> yeah, half. Yeah. I don't care about what they think. I care about what I think in my experiences. I probably, I probably fuck more women than most of these guys have in the audience, okay? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, hold on. I'll pose one question. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. 
Would you, would, you, or would you say that in general, most women prefer a man taller than themselves? What do you say, sorry? Taller. Would it be fair to say that in general, women prefer a man taller than themselves? Um, yeah, that's true. Would it be fair to say that in general, women prefer a man that makes more money than them? Um, yes, I general. guess some. Yeah. In general, Come not on, yourself. Be honest. I mean, okay. they probably they want the man to make money. Yes, okay. I'm not sure how people really like how much they Stop. care about it. Okay. Stop. Would it be fair to say that women want a guy that is more confident and ambitious than themselves? Yeah, those mm. things. Yes. Okay. What if I said that women are delusional for these inherent standards? I don't think it's delusional to have those standards. Oh, Stop the show right go. there. I don't think it's delusional that they want women that have low body counts. Yeah, but why? Hold what on. Stop the show. The reason. 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 The
Myron. Okay. Oh. You're going now? Yeah, hold on. It's loading. Give me one second. All right. I guess you want to... Hold on. In black communities, body count matters a lot. I think it's just you white folks that don't care about body count. Body count has been a conversation in our community since middle school. Uh, that might be the case if you're talking about like conservative black communities or whatever, and I would believe you, but that's going to matter for both the boys and the girls. There, I'm not aware of any communities, any minority communities that I've, I've intersected with in my entire life where the men can fuck indiscriminately and the women are held to a dramatically different standard. I've never heard of that in my entire life. There might be like a little bit of that going on where like you kind of celebrate the son, you know, laying the hot cheerleader, but for like the daughters, you're like more protective. Like that might be like a general thing, but there aren't going to be, I've never heard of a culture where people are like, oh yeah, like the guy should fuck as much as possible, tear it, do as much pussy as possible. The women need to be as chaste as possible. I've never heard of that before. But not to say it's impossible, but. <laughs> Close out and then super chats in the audience. Let's go. Super chats okay. In the Nat, okay. Nat, you got you have more super chats. Um, we do, but it's loading, so it's okay. really slow. If you so real know. quick, um, quick, can we get a yeah. camera on you, Nat? Real quick. I'm here. This guy right here. I have a quick question. Zerka. Yeah. This guy's name is John Zerka. Yeah. yeah. John, who the fuck are you? <laughs> You've got two minutes. Explain yourself. What do you believe in? What do you want men to know? What do you want women to know? I've seen you with Fresh and Fit and Sneeko and the Squad. What the fuck? Go ahead. Right, so I'm John fucking Zerka. I'm a, I'm a men's right activist. And I, just, I, I have a simple message. Men are better than women at literally everything. Literally everything. Nursing, if you get hit by a bullet, she can't pick my big ass up. She can't pick up anyone here. If she's, if she's a single mom, 80% chance the kid grows up to be a fucking school shooter. How do single dads do? Way better. They do fucking great. Way better. Men are better at everything compared to women. And women need to hear this. And you can find me at thatnigga.com. <laughs> Where did you find this dude? Yo, Fresh, where did you find this guy? I'm gonna be honest, that was yeah. Myron Estico, but this is the only guy not I said N-word with a straight face. I'm just gonna yeah. say, and an enemy of my enemy is my friend, yeah. all right? So, Sun Tzu, yeah. Don fucking Zerka. Yeah, Don Zerka. This guy. Body bagged those two okay. losers yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Nat, you got done, you're done with the Super Chats? Very soon you guys are gonna be on my platform. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Nat, do you want Zerka to read the Super Chats? You I can't read, I can't read. Yeah. Okay, I can't read. <laughs> okay, okay, he's harder than it looks. This guy's a I don't do these so- Did you see him? I can't read, I can't read. Yeah. Okay, I, <laughs> I want to know what's going on with this guy. The red shirt guy? He's very holding frame Yeah. at all points in time. <laughs> I'm like a little frightened. Maybe he's like here to like with one of the girls. You know what I mean? Like one of their boyfriends. He doesn't look like he's... Because he doesn't seem amused. He looks like he's here to kill somebody. If I was in the panel, I think I would not be comfortable. It's harder than it looks. This guy's a trip. I don't do these sober. <laughs> How gifted up are you, Zerka? Uh, honestly, I'm a huge fan of Patrick. So is my twin brother. So I'm actually kind of nervous to be here. We love Patrick. We love the show. And honestly, all Who's we have Patrick? to do is kick one of the girls out to make this a... Patrick Bet David or something. He's a guy that runs like another show on this. He's like an older... He's like a pretty chill guy. But he does like podcasts. Mm -hmm. Perfect episode. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, go ahead. Finish the Super Chats and we'll, we'll wrap Melina, up with... get the fuck out of here. <laughs> We love Mo. Ahead, we love I'm his favorite woman, actually. You got a crush. Oh, he loves me. Now nah, you're gonna read. Yes, I yeah, read. Okay, then we have uh, Full We Todd. Thanks for uh, the super chat. We see full We time. Todd. Fresh and yeah, Full We Todd. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to be here. <laughs> then he went well, to. I'm reading it properly. Full We Todd. Stupid. It's okay. I'm reading right. Uh, then we have a uh, Fresh and Fit and Value This is lit. Always dropping value. Everybody watching from home. You should have been there. Keep doing God's work. And then we have a uh, Jaquan Clay. Shout out to Fresh and Fit uh, and Myron's character. They really care about the supporters. It's not just a show. The live, uh, they they live by what they preach behind the scenes. See, uh, shout out to Masarama. Don't let them suffer for it. And y'all can. That's why we do what we do, man. Yeah. Oh. Seriously. Uh, uh, admin. Oh, you're and, uh, the nice I'm a simp by instinct. <laughs> We're at the ending, guys. All right. Is there anything else here, guys, or is this? And then we'll do some Q and A. So what I do on my show is I usually call what I do is what is called a happy ending. Let's 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 end <laughs> with you know there's a little double entendre right there. You got it. She's she's smart. <laughs> so we like to say that the future looks bright here at Valuetainment. There's a lot of fucking crazy things going on in the world. Yet we keep going. You're right. Keep pushing forward. The future looks bright. So put a little uh, silver lining on this thing. I think at the end of the day, your your guys' message is super important for men. And if willing, if women are willing to listen and not be triggered, it's actually very important for them as well. Do you guys agree? Yeah. So, uh, what would you guys say is your ideal outcome for men and women today? Um, I think personally speaking, uh, I've seen it work where my grandparents were together for 70 years plus, and it worked out very well, but for the most part, because they follow their roles. So ultimately, I would hope from them hearing us speak and us giving knowledge that each person who's a role in their relationship, whether it's feminine or masculine, but they're doing their role, and ultimately- He's not Muslim? I don't know. He's wearing a cross. Does seeing this make you excited to unveil your 60-page 
anti-red pill manifesto. Oh, yeah, we still have to do that. <laughs> oh, oh. What? Wait, did what you just you... lie about that? Did you make that up to me? Oh, I think you were talking about how I was saying, like, a long time ago we should write. No, we should you troll said you would. Oh, so you lied. Okay, you made why that are up. you revealing my, you made that up. my prep no, tactics? That's okay. When it's said and done, they understand what their partner likes, what they don't like, and they understand it's better to have a family than be by yourself. Amen. Well said. Um, I'm going to keep it nice and simple, but kind of explain why. For both parties to be happy. And what I mean by this is we live kind of in a world here, not even kind of, we live in a world where we prioritize the female sexual strategy and female happiness. You know, walk down the aisle in a white dress, man waiting is for he her, sick? lives her life, gets that security. No, he was screaming last night. Remember the video we watched with him doing the Hail Hitler He channel? lost his voice doing yeah, that. Yeah, he was screaming all night over that, yeah. Whatever. But the man a lot of the times isn't happy. There's a reason why they said, oh, you took the plunge and they make fun of guys getting married because for a lot of guys, you know, there's a reason why she's wearing a white dress, he's wearing a black suit, it's his funeral essentially. <laughs> I don't want it to be that way for men. I want guys to get in a relationship that they want to get with, with a girl that deserves it, where both of you are fulfilled. You're on your purpose, you're chasing success, she's chasing you, and if you so choose, your value should be high enough where if you want to have other women, you should be able to be transparent about it, open about it, and give your girl the opportunity to make a conscious decision if she's willing to accept this lifestyle, right? And now you guys would be surprised how honest you could be with girls if you got your shit together. So I don't want guys to be deceptive with women. I want women to also get what they want out of a relationship, which is that. happiness and security from that man and him provide for her, because I do believe that men need to be providers, but I also believe that men need to also uh, work on them being happy as well. We need to prioritize both parties being happy in the relationship, and that comes from the guy being at his best version of himself and the woman uh, doing and following that man's lead. Well said. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. For years, I've always heard, um, Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. Hey man, why is it happy? Okay. What I've learned for sure, what I know to be true, and women, listen for a second, um, happy king, happy kingdom. Because uh, if the king is happy, then the queen will be happy, and then everyone in the kingdom will be happy. But if it's happy wife and happy life, and the husband is miserable, everybody's freaking miserable. So women, would you be happy being uh, the queen or not, I guess is the question, in a happy kingdom. Don't answer that, we'll, we'll answer that the next time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the end, we'll do our Q&A with Fresh and Pitt. Sorry. But real quick, uh, Round, oh, you got what you got? Yes, we have one more huge super chat. $500 okay. by you, Vanessa Monis. All right. Oh, shit. Okay. So this is, uh, this is an official rating on a one hour alcohol rate. <laughs> oh, bro. Shit. Yeah. To 10 and how much he would pay you for sex. So, uh, yeah, he's a $500 super chat. Shout out to and you, man. He's saying, okay, he's, saying, he's saying alcohol, which means, you, you know what that means, right? Alcohol? Never mind. <laughs> okay, so I shall read it. <laughs> All right, so where are we going to start from? All right, so. Uh, from Janelle. From Janelle, okay. So this Janelle, is the, raise your hand real fast so the audience knows who you are. There you go. Cool. All right, so this is the official rating. One hour alcohol rates for tonight's episode. Janelle won, zero dollars. Patricia, three, zero dollars. Maria ate a thousand dollars. Sarah, six, zero dollars. Melina, four, zero dollars. Miami, four, yes. Carol ate six hundred dollars. Uh, Georgia, fuck? one, this nigga racist. zero dollars. <laughs> Gigi, two, a hundred dollars. Sarah, four, zero dollars. Amy, five bucks, uh, five, uh, five, zero dollars. Maya, two, zero dollars. Destiny, three. Zero dollars. Uh, Shay four zero dollars. Tony six six hundred dollars. Shay six four hundred dollars. Uh, Layla Weenie that's a weird name. Uh, four hundred dollars seven. Uh, Natalie five zero dollars and Abigail three zero dollars. Shout out to you, uh, you've met. How much does he give him? Jerk, I jerk him off. Uh, <laughs> All right, we gave five hundred bucks. So I guess. Shout out to you, bro. Yeah. All right, well, I appreciate you. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate you. Uh, be willing to listen. Uh, I believe Nat. All Are we gonna keep? What's your fit? Okay. All right. Do you, the... Do you want to watch the Q and A? Yeah. Okay. Are you bored? Yeah. Nope. We're gonna. I'm hyped for this. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. So wrap it up. You know, because they might ask really good questions. Yeah. Eric, why don't we keep the, the keep it rolling? The show goes on, man. And the episode. Let's keep it running. They're gonna, I know they're oh, gonna have good questions. No, no, no. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Questions at home. All good. All good. By the way, if you guys want to give a message to the people at home, do that now, and then we'll we'll, we'll uh, entertain the audience. <laughs> I mean, I think, well, let's uh, let the audience decide. Yeah, you can decide. You guys are the ones that are here. Are you guys okay with the 13,000 plus potentially hundreds of thousands of people that might watch this and learn from a question that you have? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Iron sharpens iron, man. Because you guys might be asking a question that someone at home doesn't have the opportunity to ask. Maybe they don't have the money to come be here. Maybe they don't have the opportunity to be here. And you might be asking a question that will save them from putting a gun in their mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, totally agree. Let's keep rolling. All good. Show goes on. Raise your hand. This guy had a first question. Your, your hand went up. Uh, we got to get a mic over here. We got Ivan and, and from PBD Consulting in the house. Walk backwards. Walk backwards. The gentleman over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that guy. Stand up, guy. Give and, us your name. And real quick, before you ask your question, guys, there's no stupid question, all right? We're all at different points in our life. If they ask a question, I don't want anybody ridiculing anybody to ask a question because at the end of the day, we're here to make each other better. And this, it's tough to be a man in 2023, right? So. All right. Well, does this work? Okay, yeah, cool. It's on Hello, now. everybody. My name's Andres. Shout out to Fresh and Fit. I love you guys. You guys do amazing content. I love that you uh, preach loyalty to your fans as well, which is awesome. Something you don't see a lot nowadays. SOS PBD. Roy Castillo got me a sales job at Valuetainment, please. <laughs> also, so my question is. Um, Ladies, what do you expect your man to do? And men, what would you do 
if some random dude went up to your girl and slapped her ass at the bar? What would you do? What would you expect your man to do? And men, what would you do? Would you fight him, go to jail maybe? It's a risky question, that's why I'm asking. Okay, so just so, the, so we understand the question. What would they, this is your main girl? <clears throat> yeah. And someone grabs her ass at the bar? Yeah. Okay, so you wanna ask the ladies first what they would expect, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. what do you expect? What would you, we'll start here and we'll go. I expect that my man defend me for sure, okay. but I don't wanna see him fighting with the other guy because okay. I don't like violence. Okay. I'd probably fight back, personally. Of course I wouldn't expect you would. So you would strike him? Yeah, of course you would. Have you not seen my guns? <laughs> <laughs> if you have seen them. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever, he's a you big guy. I'm gonna start calling you Mo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what about you? Um, I would expect him to put me, like put his arm out, protect me, and t verbally say, don't do that, and then us leave. So there's no altercation. Yeah, I would say the same. Yeah, I'd probably want him to defend me as well, but um, I don't know, I don't think I would get upset with him if he didn't, because I probably wouldn't want him to be in such a uh, rough position. Okay, so like, I feel like if the very first girl was like, I would expect him to smack the guy, and then if you delete Melina, I think all of them would be like, yeah, he should fight. That would be my guess. I feel like now they're all going to give this mm -hmm. answer, but who knows, we'll see. That wouldn't happen with me. Is, is this working? I keep asking it. Yeah, they say working. That wouldn't happen with me. My man would not let someone get that close to me, first of all, to be in that situation to touch me, because um, I only get alphas. And, um, yeah, so that's I'm so happy her mic was fucking up all night. God, it's just, that's like God heard my prayers and he just fucking smote that woman down and I hate her for her brain not for any other feature not I don't even see her as a woman actually I, just I didn't think being. you hated her and for I just her appearance. I yeah no but I'm just saying that like I'm originally feel like it's justified I didn't even know appearance. they were women on the panel but then I saw <laughs> Melina like oh shit and then I noticed but I'm just yeah. saying that for her brain I hate yeah. like the thoughts and words that she yeah. utters you know so one of my friends like uh, in college he was dating this girl and she like broke up with him because mm -hmm. they went to a party and she was like drunk and like provoking this guy or like fighting with this guy or arguing with him and he like pulled out a gun and uh, he walked away and was like let's go and she stayed because she was drunk and she thought that was a huge turn off because she was just like why didn't you stay and he was just like oh he had a gun what do you think uh, the guy literally dodged a bullet that sounds like a ratchet <laughs> hoe that you need to stay as far the fuck away from as possible but a woman's gonna be starting fights like that, and she better be able to fucking finish them. I would never die on some retarded shit that a retarded fucking woman starts. Unless it's like some fucking, yeah, yeah. unless it's like some serious, like, yeah. But if it's just like some stupid shit at a bar and she's like getting weapons involved, mm -hmm. well, she can carry just as well as a guy can. So yeah. fuck that no, shit. No, I just thought it was interesting because you were saying like Myron always says like these protection examples, and it's like, when does this happen in the real world? And I just. Sure. I mean, it that. depends on like, yeah. I mean, it's gonna depend a lot on who's starting the fight. But if the woman is starting a fight, then the woman can finish the fight. Good luck. What about you? Makes sense. Me? Yeah. Um, I would definitely expect him to, to defend me. Same, I would expect. If he didn't, I would be turned off. Okay. And what if he did it for you? Same, same. He I think there, there's appropriate responses. You know, I think you could escalate, but I think an appropriate response would definitely be to defend. Okay. Yeah, same. I don't think it should necessarily re resort to violence straight away, but your man should be able to be assertive and be like, what the fuck? Is that? Okay. Cool. And then uh, on the couch, you guys, all you ladies, what, would you expect him to defend you? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. If you expect him to defend you. Pretty much everyone. Now, raise your hand if you would lose respect for you if he didn't defend you. If he didn't, if he didn't fight. Raise your hands. Okay. okay, all right. Um, okay, so you got your answers. And then you want to, what was the other thing you want? Well, see, that's a case by case basis depending on the girl and then depending on the severity of the situation, right? If he's like a drunken retard or whatever, like just acting stupid, hey man, that's not acceptable behavior, get the fuck out of here, yeah. right? But, um, but it also depends on your relationship with that woman as well, right? Obviously, main girls get certain privileges that regular other girls don't. So it depends on the hierarchy of where that woman stands. <laughs> True. With you as the man. So, uh, so even, your, even your side hoe, chicks right? are, are public property to a degree. Well, but much less. Like, imagine if you're like a king, like a like a lord over like your serfdom, yeah. and somebody comes and like rapes because a farmer, right? Like, what are you gonna do? Like, give me twenty bushels of corn. But now, if the guy attacks like somebody within like the walls, like another noble person as part of your, you know, then you'd probably demand blood. Yeah. So it's know. open on mine and closed on yours. Um, is it closed even for the side chicks then? Because if if your side chick is allowed to get like assaulted and you're not going to defend her and you're not getting she's not getting full protection privileges then why do you deserve like full loyalty privileges i have no fucking idea I as he said something it's about that like the side right. that's a good question openness. though yeah do the side chicks yeah and then do you tell the women which one are the said, main chick and which one are the side chicks are they allowed to even know that probably because he was literally saying like if i can no longer protect a woman she should leave remember sure. about the legs thing yeah like it's that's a lot of women he's got to defend he's like running around <laughs> <laughs> making sure all of them are okay yeah yeah while also living with yeah. his bros in an iron, True, iron yeah. house. Yeah, with yeah. Well, that's where they're training every day for all the <laughs> fighting that they have to do for all these women they're defending. There's a, it's a multi-varied situation depending on a bunch of different circumstances. Anybody else have a question? What was that? I mean, that's, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the question that the man has to ask himself. That's the question the man has to ask himself. What about you? Can we get him a mic? Yes. 
Hello. Okay. So I have a question for the women, um, and I do have a podcast, Alpha Anthony. But um, so how do we get younger women to start wanting to have kids again instead of having a job and try to focus on work <laughs> until it's too late for them to be after? This is like the crux of why I usually hate reactionary politics or reactionary spaces, is because this shit it doesn't work. Like you can't make people go backwards, and it doesn't even make sense. What did I just see yesterday? That like Israel is a place that has like rampant abortion or not rampant i'm sorry but abortion i think is free for everybody a lot of women are on contraceptives like uh, israel is very big on like women's rights over like reproductive health and israel has like a birth rate of like fucking um i think it's 3.0 per woman 2.9 uh for a developed country this is like one of the highest birth it might be the highest birth rate in the world i think for a developed country uh, but then when you look at comparable countries that are trying their best to like drive more women to have children i think like italy and france and shit like they'll, you'll have initiatives you'll have government welfare you have these programs they like can't get people to do it so i don't think that like just having birth control or like getting rid of it is like necessarily mm -hmm. the answer um 30 and have a low chance of having children so guys if you're gonna ask a question to the girls can you uh, point out who you want to answer specifically because yeah. we got like 20 women here okay so uh, it's destiny's wife okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> do I do I repeat the question or do you understand it like is it sorry do you understand the question should i repeat yeah. it okay. um i think that wait say that one more time sorry it's big... you call me destiny's wife bro yeah well i don't, I don't yeah, know your name you. i don't yeah. have his name here yeah. but um mel mel time what? you want mel time what's your name Melina. Melina. Mel, okay. Yeah, Mel. Mel time. I don't want Mel. I'm Melina. You want Mel time. No, no. Well, you're asking me a question, so you get Mel time. Okay, Melina. I have a question for you. Yep. So, how do we get young women to oh, be yeah. to be more traditional in having wanting kids younger instead of wanting a career to and when it's, until it's too late for them to have kids? I, like, I think you should try to find someone that wants the same things as you and not try to like make them. I don't, I don't think yeah, that's. Well, how it I don't works. mean by making. I mean. Yeah. How you mean, do like, you how do you find them? Yeah. I mean, you should probably talk to them and figure out if they want those things. I mean, a lot of religious people seem to really care about having children, like when they're really, really young. Um, I mean, you can go for it if you want. I would say that. It's probably probably not a good idea to do that when they're really really young because they should probably like try to figure out what they want first before they have kids. All right, we got three more questions. Uh, is that? Oh, I thought that was, that's your hair. I thought that, that was your stand up, buddy. No, now you yeah you go yeah. I thought that guy's hand was up. Wow. I think so go behind him. Go ahead. The blue shirt and the glasses. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I know. It's the guy. It's the hair guy. You know who it is? With the tall yeah. hair. Go ahead, buddy. I see. The guy who was talking to him. Stand. Yes, you. Listen, we're gonna do one question from GA, one question from here, and two from, uh, from VIP in a second. So go ahead. Okay, so question. Oh, it's not what the if fuck? If somebody moved to the US a couple years ago, right, what would be your advice if that person wasn't able to kind of socially adjust to the US? What would you suggest? Uh, I have what one word for you, you. E immersion. You have to immerse yourself in the United States culture. Where are you from? Uh, the country of the year, Ukraine. Well, congratulations from Ukraine. He said, how do I so, immerse? Yeah, what's your outcome? You wanna be a How what? do I immerse? And he said, immersion. Yeah, I don't know. American? Ideally, yeah. you know, well, first I'm you like can't talk like this if, if you want to be the American. You have to immerse yourself speak in American Ukrainian culture. Right speak Ukrainian. He can't do that. That's not okay. Spe it's fine, but immerse yourself in American culture and uh, watch. I think he's speaking more from a perspective. Are you speaking about from a perspective of like adjusting your status and stuff? Yeah, I can speak to this. Okay, immigration. Simple. Um, number one, don't violate any laws while you're here. Yep. Okay, whether it's like working illegally, whatever. Because if you get caught, it's gonna fuck you up, and then you might get deported. So that's number one. Number two, try to do it legally. You're coming from Ukraine. You could potentially go refugee status, and then go ahead and consult with an immigration attorney that's not a scammer. That's Make sure you do your research. A lot of immigration attorneys are scammers. I've arrested a bunch when I was on the job. Mm -hmm. So that's what and I'm saying. What about socially? I'm Wait, yeah. What? I don't think the guy's asking for like, what's my legal path to residency? <laughs> I mean, it was a very vague question, to be fair. I feel like the answer is like he's trying to figure out like how do I socialize here? He came here from another country two years ago and he's trying to figure out like how does he immerse himself and get like friends and girls probably. That's when I'm getting I mean it's fresh and fed. He's probably not here like, hey, can you give me guide me through the immigration process? He's probably saying, How do I find girls and like socialize? That's my guess, but okay. Okay. so I can speak to that because they came from immigrant here as well. So ultimately you have to know. That's what, I'm what about socially? No. I'm okay. Sorry. So I can speak to that because they came from immigrant here as well. So ultimately you have to decide what Don't you want. Don't break any laws, by yeah, the way, yeah. too. You have to decide what you want coming to America. You want to be successful, you want a family, what is priority to you? Once you have that set in your mind, make a goal list of what you want and then learn it from people that are already here. So for example, find a mentor in your space, for example, I want to learn real estate. So I looked online, for mentors in real estate, on YouTube, you could do all, all, you could do all, all that here as well. And then find groups, for example, meetup.com, where you can go to these events, meet people in person, and ask them questions. I feel like every now and then, it's not the case, but how fucking crazy would it be if Fresh was actually like 165 IQ, pulling the strings behind the fucking door. I was just thinking that when you started saying that. Because every now and then he gives like, an answer and I'm like. I wouldn't say his answers ever give off that vibe. But. I mean, like, this is a pretty good answer, okay? 165. 165, I, he might be behind and the scenes. And he did scenes. understand that girl when she said opportunistic. And yeah, he did. didn't get it. And he was like, opportunistic. Oh, she's using the incorrect dictionary definition. You're probably <laughs> going by Merriam-Webster. That's what he was thinking <laughs> in his mind. And he sipped some tea. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, you know.
Because once again, it's about community. So you're by yourself here now, but you need a community for yourself. A brotherhood goes a long way. So find a community you can thrive in. And for example, once again, forget what your goal is. Once that's your goal, move from there. I also can help you with this one. And, and welcome to America, buddy, the greatest country in the world. I also can help you with this one. Now he's got to like say something retarded to balance out because he doesn't want to give away the act. Okay, hold on. Here it comes. <laughs> Because he's like, shit, I think I gave too much. Now, here, here we go, here we go. Bring it back, bring it back. Okay. And then, uh, Whatever the fuck you want to do here in America, then, of you can do it. Of course, bro. <laughs> Join the CEO network. Yeah. There you go. Nice plug right here. All right. Uh, we have a VIP that wants to ask a question. Go ahead, buddy. The what network? It's their fucking pay for record. Like the, It's like their hustle university or whatever, right? Oh, is he next? Oh, I didn't see who's next. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Um, first, I want to say, fresh and fit. I love your content. Keep doing what you're doing. I respect. All love from New York. Thank so, you. this is a question for the ladies. From an objective standpoint, back in Neolithic times, um, if women had to fulfill man's, a man's role and vice versa, would the human race go extinct? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah and you can just be like, yes or no. It doesn't yeah. have to be an yeah. extensive answer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty simple. Except for Melina. Yes. She'd be fighting saber two tigers. Know, know, yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. What was the question? In Neolithic time, like the Stone Age. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. You've answered the question. I can't answer. Give it to this guy right here. All right. Question for the ladies. I'll tell you my name after. <laughs> Who here is actually involved in heavy streaming? Have a, a lot of followers in her uh, social media account? Do all you ladies have over like 10,000 per social media presence? No. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah. Yes or no? Majority of you do? Yeah. Okay. Say social media. I think like four of them do. <laughs> I don't think very many here have like mm -hmm. big social media followings. But... Uh, today, shut down. What is your secondary job and how would you? Yeah. Yes or no? Majority of you do? Yeah. Okay. Say social media. Uh, today, shut down. What is your secondary job and how would you achieve that? Mm. After all the simps, stop following you guys. Not my okay. first job. Well, I'll answer. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't. I don't have some people pay me a lot of money for my services. So uh, there, people aren't just like paying me on OnlyFans. I, I host global retreats with a lot of athletes and celebrities that attend. So, but if all that failed and I went to shit, I like how nobody's gonna call her out on this because she's been like the ultimate mm -hmm. simp the entire fucking program. But if she would have been like an OnlyFans girl, she's like, oh no, people pay me for my services. I host retreats. They would have roasted the ever living fuck out of her. We're calling it like yeah, fake job. Yeah. But I would, and I couldn't, you know, get clients from online. I would do my best to find who I thought wanted like a really submissive, subservient wife that wanted me to like cook, clean, give them daily. Jobs, have children because I could still have children, and I would just take my best shot and go that way because I would be the ultimate one. Aren't you? Aren't you prior military? I am. Air Force. I'm a 95 Bravo. Oh, you want a blowjob right now, buddy? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want that enough of her. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're giving half off blowjobs. Military, military belief. What about you, ladies? Any, any more answers about that? What would you ladies do? I would go back to school because uh, in Sweden we get that for free. That is awful. I know. By the way, <laughs> nice to meet you. I am Mr. Sheets. We get paid for school. Clap it up for this guy one time. I think it's Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Oh, right, we got two more questions and we gotta wrap up. I see that guy in the suit, right there, and then there was a guy that just stood up back there. You'll go next, buddy, yeah. Got out of work, I came on with Miami, wanted to go ahead and show support. Love these guys right here. My question to the women and the men. <laughs> he came all the way from Miami. It was like a 40 minute drive, okay? It's like. <laughs> Wait, where is this? In Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay. Like, like, Melina just came from there, right? I thought it was in Miami. Sure. This guy's acting like he's fucking yeah, yeah. Che Guevara, okay? You know, chill, dude. <laughs> in here, how do you become. Or let me reword that. How do you demand or command respect amongst uncommon strangers when you're traveling? How do you command that respect amongst uncommon folks? What? I think being articulate is very helpful. I think when you can be articulate, it can help command respect and attention no matter where you go, no matter what industry you're in. Highly feminine. I think being highly feminine, but also because I, I obviously feminine, but I also command the. It's like just the most. She's like she's like if just pearly thinks Twitter was like made into a human. It's like that's what this woman is. <laughs> attention of the room when when I need to be. So I think just I'm being great at. People's body language and just watching how they move so you can understand like what situation to be in and how to act accordingly I listen more than I speak and listen, it works yeah. very well because I used to be the opposite <laughs> And what happened? <laughs> Problems <laughs> <laughs> And now you listen more than you speak. Yes, two ears and one mouth for a reason you guys want to answer this? Yeah. Is that for the question for the gentleman as well? You can take this question. I would just say, um, you have to read the room because, for example, every setting is going to be different. And for networking, it's about being able to uh, kind of like see where you're going to fit in and what your role is. For example, to be likable means you have to figure out what each person wants you to be in a scenario. Now, for the most part, though, if you want to have respect, it's like, okay, cool. On some level, read the room. And then, for example, see who's the top guy in the room. And just see what his level's at. And then from there, if you're confident who you are as a man, he's going to see that as well. But I'm going to be a little battler. The point is that, like, you're going to read the room first and then see who's the dominant one. If it's you, great. If it's not, you have to acquiesce to that, like, you know, battle, pretty much. Good answer, Walter. Respect. <laughs> Go Wait, ahead. what did Walter do prior to FNF? I know he already had clout, but for what? We're not allowed to talk about that. Why? Classified. Not Myron. I said Walter. Walter. Classified. Yeah, he's got that kind of background. Okay? You know about it? I'm just saying, okay? That if you got kidnapped somewhere, you'd want this guy to be your dad, okay? Are you First serious? Off, I like, no. you know something know about what the f I thought he was like a car dealer and he got like cheated on by a girl <laughs> and it, like ruined his life and that's why he became fresh. Isn't that what happened? Oh, maybe. He just, like, laughed a little hard when the guy was like, oh, if social media disappeared, what would you guys do? And I know uh, Fit did something prior, but I was just wondering, like, oh, um, did Fresh do something prior? I, I don't know. He, I think he worked, like, as a IT help desk guy. 
unironic, right? Because he said customer service technician or something is what he said. So I think that's what he was doing. I'd yeah. hate to be on the other end of that phone call. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Just play it. A round of applause for you guys for putting this event together. Yeah. I was just curious on the metrics and factors you guys are going to have to consider in order to put on another event like this. I'm sure the crowd and myself benefit in so many different ways. So I know it's costly if you guys' time, et cetera, but you guys have any idea what, um, what things you guys be looking for for the future? Uh -huh. to I think it's just going to come down to a conversation with the three of us and we'll work something out. And I don't know, we're, we're going to kind of feel the vibe of the room. If you want us to do it again, I think we'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last question. Whoever raises their hand the highest gets the last question. <laughs> this guy with the hat on, he, he was first. Go ahead. <clears throat> Appreciate you. What's going on, man? Thank you, Fresh and Fit. This is a lit show. I appreciate you guys. Jesus is king. Jesus is king, baby. You already know what's going on. I really appreciate it. My name is 4G Tone. Uh, everything we do is for good, for God, and for grace. But my genuine question to you guys... Move away from the pole. Oh, I got Not you. a stripper. Yeah. I know, right? There too you go. Too close. Too close. Stupid. Oh, okay. Gentlemen, your job well, well, is, as a man, as a father, is to keep your daughters off the pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep my, everybody off the pole. Right here is good? Go ahead. So my, my question is, um, Dale Carnegie said that when Abraham Lincoln was trying to lead his coalition, like lead his lead to a better United States. He had a woman next to him as well. Same thing with the leaders in here, like uh, PBD, he has Jen. Everybody that has had an impact on the world has someone behind them that really allowed them to not motivate them, but do something for it because they want to do it for the love of their woman, like MLK with Coretta. What do you see if people play their distinct roles, right? Men and women, leadership wise, where could the world be? Where do you see the world looking like? Not even the world, let's say United States primarily. What do you see it looking like so that we can all have a better, live in a better society as well? And then I mean by that is like, do you see more innovation? Do you see wars? What do you see? Do you see something that's uh, a society better to live in? Do you see less, like, big pharma so working? Your question is what exactly? Just to be clear. Where do you see the world? My, my apologies, I know I'm going. Where do you see the world? Like, uh, if we were together as families again? Yeah, if to, together as a family okay. again. Like, do you see, like, crazy things that could happen that can enhance where one. we live? Yeah, go. I'll take this one. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, that, I know it was crazy, my bad. Was, was that a plane for the landing? Yeah, yeah land, a, plane, land a plane. I appreciate the question because my favorite book of all time is written by Dale Carnegie, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Great book. Great okay, great, great book. book. If you haven't read it, read the freaking book, okay? I've also read Lincoln on Leadership, right? When he talks about circling the troops and, and making sure that you're there. And we learned that during COVID that we were all social distancing. You know, the companies that, had, that, that were able to be in the office together succeeded in all the remote stuff, uh, which I think was kind of nonsense. So, but my answer to, 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 to your question is, I'm the type of person that doesn't want to say, I don't think men need to shit on women and, and, and I don't think that women need to shit on men. So like, like I, I, don't, I don't think it's like a, a binary losing proposition, zero sum game. I want to see men win and I also want to see women win. And I know what it looks like for men to lose blowing your freaking fucking brains out. And I know what it looks like for women to lose. And where they think that they're single boss babe, and next thing you know, they're Chelsea Handler, and they, they're, they're crying themselves to sleep every night, and they're making videos on me pretend. Suicide and, like suicide and being a boss babe. It's like, yeah. basically it's bad, yeah. That's pretty much, happy. yeah, you're So death. I think if men and women can come together and, and listen to each other and do what we do here, and have shows like this, and have dialogue, and sometimes when you have dialogue, you disagree, and that's fine. You can disagree without being disagreeable, but listen to what the other side is saying, and try to engage and learn something. So I want to see men win, I want to see women win, and the reality is that if men and women win, that means families will win, that means children will win, that means society will win, that means America will win. So that's what I want to say. That's it? All right, cool. I just dropped the mic. Thank you, guys. Okay. Well, I appreciate Myron saying a great answer because all I do is appreciate his answer. So. Anyway, last but not least, one last time, please, round of applause for Fresh and Fit and being here. I want to thank, I want to thank each and one every one of you guys for being here from the back of the freaking room to the front of the room we appreciate you guys being here and for everyone watching at home real quick yeah let's ahead. give a round of applause for the audience and the thousands of men watching out yes the, sir did he skip the hey, female panel yeah. where is he gonna get to it he's gonna get there he'll get there he'll get there <laughs> Thanks for the audience first. There's no difference between, just because we're up on the stage and you guys are there, there's no difference. The only difference is that we're saying what you guys are fucking doing. He's going to say it next. Guys. Hold on. It's the only difference. He's Thank about you for to. supporting. He's about to. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, I, be, I believe we're doing photos with the, the guys in the He's VIP. About to. He's about to. So He's we'll line up. And what's that? And premiere. Okay. Premium, yeah. And, then, so, and premium. All right, awesome. And thank One you. final round of applause for everybody being here. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> DJ, it's on you. Thank you, Fresh and Fit. That's so good. <laughs> the audience. I feel like that's the perfect ending. Yeah, that was perfect. Okay. I'm fucking tired. Do you have any final thoughts for us? No. <laughs> Nothing? Do you? Not really. Oh, but okay. I just, you were supposed to. I wish they gave you a reason for why they uninvited you. Well, I mean, now it looks obvious. They just wanted to do, like, their panel with, like, a ton of women, right? Hmm. Like, there wouldn't have been space for me on that stage. They just wanted to do fresh fit. Adam. But you could have been a fourth chair uh, or, uh, for the men. Alex. Uh, well, no, but why would they want to do that? This is, like, fresh and fit plus... Oh, okay. Wait, is Adam Sosnick? It's Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay.
Nothing else? No final thoughts or feelings? or. It was pretty entertaining. I've never seen one of these. Yeah? Yeah. Well, actually, no, I did see Your and Pearls like, um, like months ago. But this one was good. Cool. Good stuff. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, hey, thank you. We appreciate you being here for this Far Her Friday. Are you going to be here next Friday? Or are you going out of town again? Or family coming in? Or I'll let you know. Okay. It's tentative. Gotcha. Make sure but to yes. keep writing all of our fights in between. Because who knows how many random things we'll fight about. I'm sure you've got like 10 things from this stream that we can fight about between now and yeah, next thanks. Friday. And so. make sure you do coke before the next time I come over. Because I almost cried today from your lack of energy. Thank you. I'm so I'll try to be like as high energy as possible. Because I know that if I'm not caring 100%. Yeah. You're I think just it's like how like, you were saying privilege is invisible. Like you're so nice to me that uh, when you're even like neutral, it feels like a gotcha. person. That's okay. I yeah. understand. Woman point of view. You're expected to be treated like a princess at all points in That's time. That's what I was expecting. I understand. Okay. Even you like not giving me this chair after the first time I thought I did something wrong but yeah. you're like this is my chair but I'm like yeah but mm -hmm. but this is how time, I work because I'm red pill I keep you at an appropriate distance I make sure that you're vying for my attention I'm not being you give me the chair the first time and then afterwards you take it away so I question myself yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly oh, fuck there's another great whiplash analogy in there fuck you need to watch that movie ask your brother about whiplash and he's gonna tell you oh my god far you haven't seen that movie it's so good he'll I'll ask him right now he'll definitely he's definitely seen that movie and is definitely one of his top Eight favorite movies. Have you movies. seen the movie Whiplash? He's going to say also, so good. Also, do girls in Boulder wear makeup Why would I trust a guy to answer that question? Because I've been to Boulder. I don't trust you. Okay. Okay. Has he read it? Can you tell? He doesn't have red receipts on. What an awesome guy. I like this guy more and more every time. <laughs> Is he typing? Nope. Oh, fuck. He's probably sleeping. No, he's not. How do you know? Because he was up till like 5 a.m. Okay, maybe he wanted to sleep early tonight. It's already 2 a.m. I feel like he'd say that. Wait, what's your brother's name again? Forens or something? Or Forays? You're dox my family. Oh, well, okay. Fuck you then. It starts with an F. I was going to say I could do him for Friday instead of you. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, because it works. But Yeah. Okay. He asked to come, and I said no because I was scared they'd like him more. True. Good and job. then I'd see a clip later of like Destiny and Froze screaming you at each other, and then they'd say better than Fatwa too. Damn. What do you think of Amy's performance tonight? Um, I would say exemplary. <laughs> I like that every single time she spoke, it was just say something with incredible profoundness. Like she chose yeah. her moments like a surgeon, and she struck. Like a hummingbird. They did group her in with the compliments. They said, "Girl in blue shirt." Absolutely. Great responses. Girl with blue, yeah. Yeah. Just phenomenal. Wow. I look forward to seeing her future performances on. I mean, she's just your proxy, right? Like, you trained her for this, probably. I don't <laughs> prefer proxy. I actually prefer prodigy. Because that's what I would consider her. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen. I love you guys. It's been fun. Uh, we'll be back. Oh, shit. Wait. Who just joined? Wait. Oh, what? Oh, do you want me to advertise the merch? Uh, what's that cute little plushie in the background you got there? Wow, the cute little plushie can be found at store.destiny.gg, guys. Look at this guy. Hold on. Look at that. Look at how cute and adorable he is. Wow. Look Farah at that has cute like plushie. 10 of these, right? He's, this is cute. You yeah. have like a bed full of these. They're so adorable, guys. Check these out. <laughs> in her bed. What? Stop, Nina. Don't be weird. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> That's all. That's all. <laughs> okay, here you go. <laughs> Buy these. They're adorable. They're cool. Ooh. Yeah. All right. How much money do you make off merch? About fifty thousand dollars a day. <laughs> okay. All right. I love you guys. Been fun. We're going to catch you. Pop channel. 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 My dear, I'll catch you guys. Why do you say that? Because that's my outro. But what does it mean? Um. What? Oh, fuck! I don't remember. We used to like. We used to say like a long time ago on the internet. It's like rip just for whatever like oh see you later rip rest in peace we just say that i get rip yeah I didn't, so, like, it's like, so then it was like yeah like ripperoni like see you later ripperoni and then you just like add more words to it and eventually oh, was that just, the first word yeah like ripperoni but then you just like add more it's like ripperoni but now i don't remember what it all is see you guys later ripperoni kept i ruined it i don't know you <laughs> fucked it up what's the wait what's like the first three Just 
Let's try again. I don't. I don't remember it now. Reperino cappuccino. My tutorino. I I I don't remember it. Reperino cappuccino pep. I don't know it now. You fucked me up. <laughs> I can only say it once per night. It's like a spell, and I ran out of mana. Okay, so I'll cast it again tomorrow night. You're gonna listen then if you give a fuck about it. Okay, I'm leaving. Good night, guys. Bye. Rip. <laughs>